Hello everyone, welcome to episode 7 of the Trip VR podcast. My name is VR Bug and we have here Dr. Greg. Say hello Greg. Hello Greg. Hello Greg. And we also have <laughs> a special guest here. It is Beardo Benjo, a YouTube hello. slash content creator. So hello Ben, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me gentlemen. I'm, oh. uh, I'm, I'm pleased to be here. Good stuff. It's our pleasure. Totally. We absolutely love your content. Absolutely. Big time. Such a good um, VR YouTube channel. And if you've never Thank seen you. any of Benjo's stuff, you should check it out. It's really, really good. And we'll put all the links for the description of his channel and ours as well in the description. So please do go and check it out when you can. Coming up in this episode, we talk about the games we've been playing over the last few weeks, including a revisit to Hellblade, Son of Sacrifice, that I played on my channel. We're also going to talk about a preview of Awake In, an up-and-coming horror game, which looks very, very creepy. So we're going to have a little chat about that. We also talk about an amazing winter sports game that's out there called Powder VR. It includes uh, snowboarding and skiing. Uh, I'm an ex-snowboarder, so I absolutely love this and been spending a lot of time in it. Also, after watching one of Benjo's videos on his channel, I thought it would be a really good idea to see what we're all excited about with up and coming VR games in 2021. So we all pick a couple of our favorites and we'll have a little chat about that as well. So on my channel recently, I've been going back to classic VR games from 2016 onwards and replaying them. And one of my all time favorites is Hellblade, Sin of Sacrifice by Ninja Theory. It's an absolute amazing action RPG game and one that I am very fond of and was so happy to replay through. So I did this in one stream, which I just couldn't believe, but managed to do it in like a one shot the entire game in one stream, like absolutely crazy. And I don't know what is possessing me to do this kind of thing recently. I did it with Half-Life Alex the other night as well. I did it with Hellblade. It's whatever. Anyway, Alex I doable. love this. It is more doable. It is definitely more doable. Um, but all in all, Hellblade took me the best part of about, I think it was 10 hours overall to complete from beginning to end. And what a ride. It's so good. So um, what are your thoughts, guys? I, I take it you've all played Hellblade? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I own Hellblade on... I think I own it. I own that game on every format that that game is available. Oh, really? Oh, like that much? Yeah. I picked it up when it came... When it, I think when it initially launched, it was just... It was, it was either just, just PlayStation PC. or just It was Xbox. just PC. Oh, was it? Was it? it? It was, I think it was one platform, one, one of the two consoles. It would have been on PC as well oh, because okay. PC is, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, master race. But it wasn't on one of the other consoles, and I got it on console because I didn't have a PC at the time. Um, and it it knocked my socks clean off. And then I picked I picked it up since on the Switch. I've got it on PC to play it in VR. That game is it's an odd one because it it feels like it does have quite a lot of acclaim, but I still I still feel like it's un undervalued like there's not enough yeah. people that appreciate yeah. just how good that game is yeah, exactly. yeah agreed like um it's, it's yeah. quite an amazing experience and I'd, I'd say it's really really unique um especially when it comes to what they did with uh, replicating psychosis oh man so it's... senua has like inner demons uh she has voices yeah, in she, her head i think she's schizophrenic i believe schizophrenic, is it, I think she's yeah. schizophrenic yeah. is she um and you're constantly hearing you know these voices in your head as you're playing through the game and in, in one kind of ear, you kind of got someone that's um, being positive and trying to help you through your quest. And then in the other ear, you kind of they're got like, them. <laughs> yeah, they're kind failing. of like, oh, yeah, I'm they're mocking die. you. <laughs> but it's really creepy. It's really, really creepy. Oh, it's great. And, um, you know, when, when you feel like you're really making progress in the game, those voices, they get even more negative because mm -hmm. they're trying to hold you back from fulfilling your quest. And you can kind of feel that kind of weird, oh, yeah. like, um, pressure to kind of yeah. fail and and you know it, it, it must replicate what people feel when they have kind of psychosis I, I would I would urge you to check out if you haven't already um, Ninja Theory on the run up to releasing the game um, were releasing videos showing the kind of the making of uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. before, before it came out and that was the first I'd seen of it they, they had um, this lady in the studio all covered in the mocap and she was yeah. you know, becoming uh, Senwa and that's that making of series dives into kind of how they spoke to professionals um yeah. to understand exactly what it feels like to have a form of psychosis or have those voices playing in your head so they, they did their research i mean that game was 
overwhelming at points, yeah. especially if you're playing with a head headset and you're trying mm -hmm. to push through and it's I, I couldn't focus at certain points because there's mm. so much happening. There's, you know, you've got the visual stimuli because it's a gorgeous game. Yeah. And then you've got the the constant barrage of voices. It it they absolutely nailed I can't say for sure that they nailed it because I don't experience it myself, but that's the best representation I think I'm ever going to experience of that particular thing. Yeah, I think I think you know, coming from again somebody that hasn't suffered from anything like that, um, you come away from the game afterwards, getting a sense of what it must be like for people that these unfortunate people that that suffer these kind of things on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah. Yeah. but there's so much this game. It's not it's not just like um, the research they did in this mental health, which is. You know, it's very, very unique. There's not many games that have kind of moved into that territory, I don't think. Um, but also, all the aspects of the game, like everything about it is so solid, whether you're looking at um, the, the uh, audio, um, mm. and that that's also like the actual um, soundtrack as well. Like the score is incredible. Like graphically, it is stunning. And I'm so glad mm -hmm. they brought it to VR because I don't think you really get a sense of how gorgeous that game is on on flat screen i think when you when, no. you, when you put that headset on and you look at those visuals oh. then that's when you really get how good um the game is and how much time and yeah. effort they must have put into the environment I'll, I'll throw it out there i you know throw it in if you th if you think i'm i'm wrong here but that is probably the best flat screen to vr conversion oh yeah absolutely. i've ever played it's i can't great. think of a better game that was flat and has made a, a smooth transition into the world of VR. Off the top of my head right now, anyway, in the same way that Hellblade did. Yeah, And, and I would probably say that there's still a huge amount of people out there that don't know Hellblade has a VR mode. No, probably. I always suggest that every time it goes on sale, I'm like, God, get this game, play it in VR. Uh, you know, because the, the, you know, there's so much, that, like the Norse, the Norse mythology that goes throughout the game is also, you know, oh, it's God. like based in like real yeah. Norse. It, it's just... Uh, emotionally, I have never felt so connected to a video game character in my life. Yeah. Um, there, there's a scene, and it's towards the, the beginning, where she's standing at the door. Oh, my God. And you, as the camera, on. are coming in behind her. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. She yeah. turns around, and her face comes right up. And all of a sudden, oh, she realizes wow. you're there. And her eyes open up, and she goes, <gasps> I, yeah. get, I get goosebumps just thinking about Holy that shit. one scene. I've <laughs> never yeah. felt that before it's like oh my god she's looking right at me just right i know through, and you know? and don't you feel really bad as well because you realize you're like the darkness the thing that's yeah. haunting her yeah yeah and you're seeing yeah. it from the darkness perspective and yet yeah. you're joining senior on a quest and you're rooting for her but at the same time you're like an antagonist of her you know and mm -hmm. it's like uh it's you feel quite conflicted while you play it i think yeah, again I that's definitely... yeah it's another thing that VR does. Like you, you don't get that necessarily when you're playing it on a flat screen because you mm. don't you don't feel like you're there in the world. Yeah. You know, the the the, the torment you hear and you feel when you've got the voices is amplified times ten when you're mm -hmm. you're there. And if you turn around, there's the world. You, you're you're in there. You're part yeah. of that world. And as as you say, when when you get that particular shot, it is kind of iconic. It is. <laughs> but yeah. when when you when you get to that point and she turns, yeah, you just like, oh shit, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, I'm 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 the bad one here. Um, I know, I know. It does kind of tear at your soul yeah. a little bit. It really does. Oh yeah. Or when you're like, you really start realizing how incredibly immersive that game is when you're going in to fight that whichever uh, uh, god it is, the fire one, <laughs> and all those flames are all around you and the screaming, and you're just like, oh god, yeah. it's just so intense. You know? I think like, his, his name is. Is it Sir? 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 Yes. That's yes. it. He's a fire god, isn't he? Yeah, he. That is really intense. That scene, mm -hmm. and uh, there is a lot of flames and kind of like you know, you feel like you are in hell. I mean, it lives up yeah, to the title, it's, obviously. Yeah. It's Hellblade. And don't forget it's gonna be how, flames. how um, epic the combat is in that game. The combat yep. is just, it's just so satisfying, mm. you know, to get those parries and that bang, you know, and just to start slashing away. Oh, just it's awesome. But not overcomplicated as well. No, yeah. no. Which, which is, again, it works in its favor. They kept it really simple, but super effective. And it just feels gratifying. Like you, again, like you, you nail one of those parries, yeah. you feel it. You, it all comes back to sound design for me, that game. Mm. Um, it's, it's a stunning looking game. It's, it's got a, an emotional story with an incredible character. Everything's everything kind of, it's a perfect storm for a great game. But it all for me ties back to the audio design because it's, it's so, so strong. Um, 
and especially for VR, if you get the audio design right, that's the thing personally that pulls me into the world the most. If I, if it feels like those sounds are happening at the exact right place, and yeah, it does so much to bring it bring it all all, all to life. And I I don't know if it would have had as much an impact on me audio wise if I hadn't played it on the index. Mm. So oh, the, yeah, the, the index the is audio. is pretty much the best audio you can get on a on an HMD right now, and it sounds so good on that headset. And I haven't tried mm. it in any other headset at all. I haven't played the flat version of the game with headphones on, so I don't know how it compares. But with the index audio, it's insane how good it is. Yeah, I played I played it in the Vive Pro, and it was really good on the Vive Pro. Yeah. Too, but I think it would have been better on the index, because the index audio just oh. kicks the crap out of Vive yeah, Pro. Yeah, 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 Greg, look, yeah. you need to play it again yeah. then in that case, because yeah. you got an index, haven't you? Yeah, you need, to play, you need to play it again. I need to go and buy an index and then play this game again. Is that what you're telling me? Well, yes. well, yeah. I, I would, I would hang on because my theory is the index two New will index be announced, oh, yeah, hundred percent announced towards the end of this year. I think, it, I reckon it'll be announced towards the end of this year. Um, available right about right about the same time the quest 3 is announced because quest 3 is yeah. coming as well <laughs> anyway we can have a separate conversation about that but, um october, october, november. Yeah. i yeah, think i think so it. october announcement yeah, yeah definitely uh 100 percent <laughs> um you heard it here first folks <laughs> you heard it here <laughs> first um so this is kind of leads on to i mean we obviously all had a really good experience with this game absolutely loved it uh singing its praises yeah. and um there is a sequel that was announced. Uh, I think it was oh. it was last year, wasn't it? I think it was announced. Yeah, let's, uh, let's first say the trailer. That trailer that opens up oh. with that that uh, what's the name of the band that uh, something hey 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 it's like a Norse band. Uh -huh. They're all in that the tribal band. band. Yeah, uh, I don't know the name. The facial expressions on Sinua, you know, it's supposed to be real time in the engine, and oh my god, it's it. Goosebumps again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it's war so drums and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. You know, kind of playing. You can, yeah. And you can, you, I know, you can feel the trailer like really building up. And again, it goes back to the audio design. Audio design. They, audio design. They've got it front and center again, even in the trailer for the next one. So the next um, entry into the series is called Seno Saga. So yeah. it's a continuation of the story. I won't spoil the end of Hellblade, but you do get some strong signals that the story is going to carry on at the end of Hellblade. And this is obviously the next installment, and, and the original story is progressing. Um, so it's quite funny. I was watching um, a couple of videos on YouTube um, just about kind of behind the scenes of, of Hellblade 2 and how they're kind of progressing and getting on with it. And um, there's a big question at the moment as to whether or not it's going to get VR support. <laughs> now, we love it, yeah? We love it in VR. We know it's the way to play the game, and we feel sorry for those that haven't experienced it in VR because mm -hmm. you need to go and just buy a headset just for this game. Um, but the idea that it hasn't been announced for VR right now, it kind of fills me with dread. Like, big time. So has anyone, has anyone concerned. heard anything? Um, I haven't heard anything, but I'm not too concerned. Okay, so, so what's your reasoning for not being concerned? Bearing so in the, mind the, they've been acquired as well. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, mm, that puts me a little bit concerned. Um, I, the, the VR mode came much later for Hellblade, for the first yeah. game. Um, and just listening to the, to the three people here, there's obviously a lot of love and passion for that VR project within the community. The people that have played it can see the value of that project. And, and yeah, yeah. Ninja Theory, I think, are one of the studios that would pick up on that and say, well, we should do we should do the same again and it should get the same treatment. My only concern is is, is the acquisition because yeah, obviously they're part of Xbox Game Studios now and Xbox are, other than Nintendo, who, who aren't really in a place to kind of to, to jump into VR, I don't think. Well, they're the ones... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my God. They've already done it. They have. They've already done it. They have. Um, they, they've done it. But in terms of like raw processing power and having a machine that could actually genuinely do some fantastic VR, Xbox are the one machine on the market right now that could do it. Yep. But aren't Absolutely. doing it. Yeah. And it feels like... To, to me, it's still strange. I remember what I was still working at a game store when PSVR came out and we were all in there putting bets like Xbox will be next year. They're going to see how this pans out and then they're yeah. going to jump in on the VR market and then that's it, VR world domination. Yeah. And here we are, I don't know how many years later, but some years later thinking, I, I, are they going to get involved? Well, if I think... You 
I think if you if you follow Phil Spencer on any of um, I do. on the socials, then I think you probably get an impression of uh, what Microsoft think about VR right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you, so interesting, interesting tidbit yeah. from when they announced the Xbox Series X. It is now, but when they originally announced it, there was three or four sound bites in the in the, the reveal for it where they specifically spoke about VR. It, it really? was it was part of the initial showcase. For when it was, I can't remember what it was called at that point, but it had a code name. Yeah. But there's, there's, you can still find it on YouTube. But there's a video where there's a bunch of execs and people that were working on building that machine sitting there in front yeah. of a black screen talking, and three or four of them specifically say, uh, "This thing is going to be the next leap in VR and gaming." Like it, it, they, they specifically mention VR. So I was at that point, I was like, I was like, 100, we're going to get some kind of Xbox VR. Um, no I've way. divulged massively, but but yeah, I'm not particularly worried. I do think we will see a VR Eventually. mode for for Hellblade, but I, I wouldn't hold your breath for a launch. I think it will be some time afterwards. Um, okay, so you you feel possibly a bit further down the line, like they did with the original Hellblade VR. I think they'll keep a subsidiary or, or or a chunk of the team working on that, while okay. the rest wrap up the project and move on to the next thing. Hopefully, I'd like to see someone continue to to yeah. implement that sometime down the line. But, but bearing in, in mind that Microsoft don't have a VR mm-hmm. implementation right now in any shape or form, and Phil Spencer's been very vocal about the fact that mm-hmm. they don't think it's mature enough yet, why would they waste time and money right now in bringing a AAA game to VR? Is it? I, I have this interesting theory about Xbox and how the, their future is firmly Game Pass. Um, and there's a lot of ways they can go with that. Obviously, we've seen the Bethesda acquisition and what that means for Game Pass. Game Pass and Game Pass isn't just Xbox. Game Pass is a, is a, is a platformless thing. So I play, I, I subscribe to Game Pass and I play all those games on PC. Mm-hmm. If they could add a VR offering to Game mm-hmm. Pass, they're broadening their horizons even more than they already are. And I think Xbox are very, or Microsoft, I should say, are very smart about just widening that audience. Keep it, get, get it wider and wider. Bring people into the ecosystem. Get people playing. It doesn't matter where they play. It doesn't matter if they own an Xbox. As long as you're subscribed to Game Pass, that, that, that's kind of all they care about because you're part of their ecosystem then. So I would like to see, I mean, Flight Sim is probably yeah. the only one right now, but I have that through Game Pass and obviously within Game Pass that has the VR support. Okay. So although they don't have a VR headset, it would be, in my opinion, smart to start adding a subsect of Game Pass that were VR supported titles because then they're bringing people into that ecosystem where they're paying wow, a subscription to VR games. That. Yeah, I see. It, I see your it's point. It's the wrong way, but if I worked for Microsoft, that's where my head would be at. Because it's again, they're just trying to attract people to that service. I can't remember how much it is a month, but if you get people into yeah. that, because that would that would attract in a VR crowd. You know, mm-hmm. what right now? What reason do we have to subscribe to Game Pass if our primary games are VR games? None. Yeah. Other than Flight Simulator, but but if they start to fit, factor in more VR games into that offering, yeah, yeah, because Hellblade's could, there. You could be right. You could be right. Um, it does kind of make makes sense to make something like game pass that is their bread and butter to be future proof you know Mm -hmm. and let's face it vr is a new wave of gaming it is the future of gaming so they must be thinking about it down the line i'm I'm personally not convinced that um it will get vr support i i'm not sure that (laughs) it'll happen the only thing that makes me think that maybe is because in the behind the scenes video there was, if you look in the background, I don't know how I spotted this, but I, I did. In the background, sitting down um, behind the, the guys doing the presentation on the video, there is somebody sitting there with a Vive Pro on the top of their head. <laughs> and I spotted it. I went, <gasps> pause the video, and I went, Senua, Saga, Vive Pro. It could happen. <laughs> they, they might have been slacking off. They could have been playing Pop One. I know, and this is, but this is the other thing. Like after I saw that, after I saw that, I was like, actually, some developers they they develop in VR. They create assets and stuff in VR. Spin it around, look at it. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah they do, right, yeah. they do. And so, therefore, that doesn't necessarily mean it's in development. For VR. It doesn't mean it, but I'm thinking because a lot of times that's where you run into issues trying to port a 2d game into vr is they don't necessarily it's not like just you flip a switch and now your your game is in fully 3d you know? yeah, it has they to be don't. actually i no, thought that's what it they has did. to be actually modeled and everything <sighs> and so if they're actually developing the world in vr that makes it much easier to turn it into a vr port because everything's already modeled 
you know, they're yeah. just placing their scenery around. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think they'd be nuts not to. As big awesome. as, as big as that game has been in VR, every every VR tuber I've seen that has played that game, they are all like, "This is a masterpiece. You, it, you have to experience it." And personally, for me, when I first I got the game on launch day when it was just two D, I played about twenty twenty five minutes of it, and I'm like. It's kind of boring me, really. It's very linear. Really? Oh, look, it's combat. I just like, bleh. And yeah. then when I p- played it in VR, and you come in on that water, and she's rowing on that log boat, you know? And I was like, holy crap, this is it. <laughs> Amazing. It, was a, it completely transformed the game for me. So Yeah. I get I mean, it. If, it yeah. if they're making it on the same engine, then... Yeah. The process is probably already there in place that they followed yeah. for the first game to convert it to VR. They're mm-hmm. already going to have five pros and dev kits of vr sitting around the office you know just unused right now yeah i don't know i, I there's a glimmer of hope in the back of my mind that i think we'll see this because the ground works there they've worked yeah. on a vr game before okay. this is the follow-up i don't know I'm, I'm i'm optimistic no this is good and it's good to be optimistic so that's it is. Right. that's cool it's good that you're optimistic i'm semi-optimistic semi-optimistic <laughs> uh greg are you are you optimistic or pessimistic what are you I've, i'm pretty optimistic that they're going to have optimistic. a VR version on this one so okay so if I you just... if you put all three of our views together we've got it's coming to vr That's i think we're right. like 70 percent right now which is yeah, pretty yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I <reckon> so. yeah. <laughs> a year after launch that's my benchmark for okay year, year after launch of vr i think that's too far away because it, it, I, the 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 vr port of that game came out just a few months just a few months after few the months initial after. launch. Yeah, was it really? So, okay. Yeah, it wasn't I, thought, I thought it was longer. Uh, I don't think so, but I could be wrong. I'm going to fact check oh, you he's right gonna, now. He's going to fact check. It seems like... All right, <laughs> he's my actually old man fact brain, checking right now. Yeah, in my old man brain... There, there it, he goes. Yeah. Look. He's off on one. I can hear oh, those God, keys typing. <laughs> this is quite hard to find an, an, an answer. Uh, Hellblade, Hellblade came out in, in 2017. It's already... F- almost four years old came wow. out in 2017 but i can't find a release date off the bat for the vr mode uh, oh vr edition came july 31st of the following year about six months okay yeah, I knew okay like six months so after. yeah yeah right. yeah well that's amazing so you heard it here first we've got hellblade 2 coming to vr there you have it <laughs> yeah we're 100 percent 100 percent sure we can <laughs> take that to the bank <laughs> we're 100 percent sure we're not too sure Please don't quote us. <laughs> Not at all. Sixty-nine percent of the time, we're positive every time. Uh, every time, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, so yes, yeah, so I got a key for Powder VR, and um, I, I wouldn't have normally got a game like this, but she had contacted me and asked me to check it out. So I was like, sure, I'll check it out. You know, it's free games, why not? You know, <laughs> why not? And, indeed? Uh, yeah, and you know, I've never gone skiing or anything like that. And the minute I put those skis on and i started down that slope i had this big stupid grin on my face and it, it was just it was a blast. Oh, amazing yeah uh it you could just you just feel you feel the velocity as you're going down you know and it just oh. that, that like you turn with your poles you just kind of turn your arms so you really get into it like bring it down and pushing those poles to the snow and the down farther down you get the faster you go and mm-hmm. you know the, the streets are going by your face and great music and <laughs> You know, uh, you get that feeling. You, you, you just come up as a tree. And you're like, ah, stack. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got you get to watch yourself in a, in a in a camera afterwards. You see yourself come down and smack into the tree. And it's slow mo, so it's like, boo, and you hear this guy going, oh, oh my god. <laughs> and then it gives you a list of everything you've broken. So I always give my brother crap because the last time he went skiing, they had to carry him off the mountain. In, on a stretcher oh, and sprained oh, his ankle no. and i'm like well i would be that guy too obviously i'd probably be dead yeah. as many things as i break <laughs> every time uh, I it, def- it definitely sounds like you shouldn't really get on a pair of uh, skis no, irl no, then, no, in that no, case no. No. yeah well i mean but, I, I used to snowboard like years ago and um so i was really intrigued to see how it translates into virtual reality and um once you play around with the control system because there's very various degrees of kind of difficulty um and you find the one that's right for you then it starts feeling very realistic. Yeah, and it's great. Yeah, so it, the way it works is you have, um, it tracks your your head and the front-facing controller. So the alignment, which is when you're on a snowboard, yeah? 
So the alignment between your head and your hand is a direction that you go. So if you move your hand over to the left and you kind of look in that way as well, the ball just slowly turn, mm -hmm. which is the same as when you snowboard in real life. So wherever you look on a snowboard, you end up. And this is what a lot of beginners, they, they make a lot of mistakes because they're kind of looking one way, but they want the board to go a different way. And, yeah. <laughs> and they don't realize that wherever you're looking, your body naturally turns and the board will always follow. And so Powder VR are kind of copied that basic principle and it's translated really, really well into the mechanics of the game. And it feels good. It feels really, yeah. really good. And um, I just didn't think that they would be able to replicate anywhere near that kind of feeling. You know, you're, you're standing, are you, are you right, Ben? What's that? <laughs> What's going on up there? House. Oh, it's just God. getting excited about the sound of this it's, game. There's uh, a person tied up in the bedroom up there trying to escape. You know? <laughs> Everything's okay. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Move along. Nothing to see here. Continue, gentlemen. <laughs> okay, we'll continue. Um, <laughs> anyway, so the, the the way that they've they've now the the realism with this is like second to none. It's, it's yeah, even very in skiing, impressive. like when when you stop, you know, you just pull your body sideways, and the snow comes up just perfect with you as you. So you really feel you feel like you're in the movies watching those guys ski, and then they stop. You know, <laughs> it's just quite a feeling yeah i've not i've not played it i'm gonna have to go and check it out you're doing an exceptionally good job of selling this game right now um it is it's i have never snowboarded i have never. never skied i'm i'm not built for it i'm not very athletic um but but i i, I think i would enjoy it in vr I, it sounds like an absolute blast the the thing that appeals to me the most is is seeing how many bones i can break <laughs> it's a, almost like a challenge run of powder vr yeah. How if I can play it like a kind of a bone breaking simulator, then, yeah. then that's that's how I used to play Skate Three. I would just, how many bones can I break? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that actually because um, there's also some um, skateboarding VR games on the horizon as well, which is going to be utilizing a similar sort of mechanic to Powder VR, like mm -hmm. you know the, the board under your feet. Um, that's that sense of velocity. Like, how are they going to? bring that across from a, a skateboard as well as a snowboard you know so yep it's, it's exciting because i think for, for the longest time vr was shooters you know yeah. it was it's the one thing that translated so well to Wave vr was shooters. shooters you know give us a gun that, that's done and give us another gun fantastic and then the guns turned into swords and shields but now we're starting to see people really do interesting things with vr where they're looking at all aspects of everyday life and going yeah. okay well can i make that work in vr can i make that work in vr and snowboarding and skiing is that's amazing that they've got that to feel as, as it sounds anyone anyway, not played it but like yeah. snowboarding and skiing yeah. um and that's why i'm so excited about the skateboarding mm. aspect because that's that's a little bit more my speed i tried to skateboard in my youth i wasn't yeah. very good but i tried it so i, I connect yeah. with that a little bit more than than with, with snowboarding and skiing um and i spent a huge amount of wasted time playing tony hawks um, oh you know, didn't, didn't we all? Didn't we all? That was that was I my did. youth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never I'll, played I'll, it. I'll mail you some. I've got some old ones somewhere. I'll send them over. Um, but oh. I, I spent so much time playing those games. They kind of made me who I am in terms of music taste as well. So I have a definite nostalgic bone for yeah. those. And I was speaking to the to one of the, de the devs of VR Skater. So there's two coming out. There's VR Skater and Grind Punk. Yeah. And the VR skaters, so they're quite close to releasing for early access, as far as I can understand. They're just trying to make sure they've got the tutorial right. Ah. Um, because it's... So I was curious about how you control in that game. Because I thought, if it's just going to be the sticks, how immersive is that going to be? They're going for a proper... If you can imagine that you're holding two Oculus controllers or whatever it is you've got. Yeah. They're trying to imitate what you do with your feet, with your hands. I noticed so, that in the video. I saw one... Hand yeah. Hand so with a kick flip, okay. you need to come across and up with one hand to create that kind of movement to yeah, yeah. flip the board. Apparently, um, ollieing and nollieing is mapped to a button. But if you want to pull off the tricks, you've got to pull off the right hand gesture and movement. So it's going to be pretty active, but it's an interesting way to approach that kind of yeah. how you would. Because your, your feet in skateboarding, they have to go a certain way and, and come off at a certain speed and angle to, to, to create the trick. So yeah. if they can translate that into VR. That'd be great. That, that would be a yeah. really addictive game, definitely. There was something Super similar. Exciting. Like somebody tried this years ago. It was called um, uh, Hoverboard. I think it was called Hoverboard VR. I think it was one when I like I remember uh, that. Yeah, I think when Viveport first started, it was one of the very first titles mm -hmm. you could play it on Viveport. 
Um, and it, it sounds like it's a similar sort mm. of thing where they tried to emulate kick flipping with your hands and stuff. Your hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I can't wait to try that. That'd be I incredible. Can't wait. Especially if they got ramps, like mini ramps and things. I, I'm not sure. Every, every bit of gameplay I've seen has been street, street skating. Street skating. So it's been, you know, starting kind of one end. They almost look like luge courses, like you're going oh, from nice. one point to another rather than a free roam. But yeah. I could be wrong. But everything I've seen has been kind of a straight line. Yeah. And it's how you plot out the run so you might grind and then you kick flip off and then you do a jump and you progress to the end but it, it looks I, i've played quite a bit of this is completely unrelated but i've played quite a bit of stride okay yeah either of you played stride this is like the mirror's edge one, i watched it? your video though it looks fun so stride yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of parkour in vr and it it reminds me a lot of that when i see this the vr skater videos because it looks like kind of getting a better and better run each time like okay if i go down that bit and i just grind there and because stride kind of it oh, no. rewards you for trying different things and going different ways so you okay. can play that game over and over again and get a better faster run and mm -hmm. and i think that's what the thing. i think that's what they're trying to achieve okay. with, with vr skater and kind of approach this same course but do it better do it faster so do you, do you think that loop will be enough to keep you coming back like is it, is it strong so. enough with stride did you find you playing so. it for ages oh stride yeah strides um, it's it's a perfect pick up and play game they're also adding a campaign to it which yeah. is going to be mm. apparently very similar to mirror's edge so kind of full immersive campaign with with enemies you need to kill and stuff yeah. but at the moment it's an, like an almost an endless um endless runner mm -hmm. but it's parkour and it changes every time and the yeah. further you get there's like this wall of I guess like black sludge and it's chasing, yeah, it's chasing you, you down. Yeah. and you need to okay. keep going faster and faster but oh, that wow. game to run you actually have to do this so okay. it's exhausting because you're doing that yeah. the whole time oh. so, almost like a fitness title then by the sounds it's, of yeah. it so many of them are they yeah, sneak right. fitness in there that's okay. That's good. Good. But I mean, with games like Powder and that, obviously you you wouldn't be pushing on a snowboard, so no. they don't they don't need that mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, but they they do give you the option to do th uh, tricks and stuff. So mm -hmm. when you when you hit like a, a kicker, we call it a kicker. It's like a little ramp that you build out of snow. When you hit a kicker and you get some air, you can actually uh, reach down to your virtual board and push a button to grab, and then you That's can start cool. pulling some of the some of the tricks and you can do like tail grabs nose grabs if you i think it's called a melon when you grab between your legs the melon, ball. yeah yeah melon and um i I, n I was nailing the 180s so i was hitting the kickers and doing a nice 180 getting a nice landing and um i was like well, how do you do a 360 because like 180 is really easy because i can just kind of turn the controller and turn around <laughs> a little bit and i thought do i actually have to spin around all the way around to do a 360 and you do you actually That's do. Awful. So, so I actually um, did like an ollie off the kicker, um, and then just turned around in the spot, <laughs> like spinning in the air. And I, I can't wait to get some footage of this. Hopefully, we'll have That's some cool. for the podcast when it goes on. I love. Have that, some yeah. footage of me trying these three sixties. It must be hilarious seeing me just running around in a circle and just kind of bending down and just grabbing <laughs> in this imaginary snowboard and stuff. <laughs> it's gonna be. Yeah. It, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. This game. I need to check it out. I need to check so it out. Yeah. I think we should also we should also uh, uh, announce or just bring up that they they have a a event coming up. It's a it's a contest. Okay. Uh, that Powder does that starts on the twenty seventh. So it'd be Saturday next Saturday, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah. Saturday. Uh, and it, the end date is three six. And if you we'll put a link uh, where people can uh, join up and register. But the prize, I guess, total prize pool is five hundred dollars. So I don't know what that means exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so you know, that, that's really cool that they're doing that to bring it a is. little. You know, uh, I'm canceling all my videos for the next two weeks. I'm just going to play yeah. powder. Yeah, so <laughs> really good. That. Yeah, there you yeah. go. No, that that's is what, that's it's, what she it's told a really me. She's like, hey, too. everybody's going to be new, so you know, yeah. you have a chance. Yeah, but. I, I think these kind of events are a brilliant way to promote your game. Uh, I know that in death, um, in death, they, they did it, and they, yeah, yeah they they're doing loads of different events and stuff, and it does bring people back. And and when you think the, about VR, yeah, yeah, the VR community is a lot more invested in singular products, whereas I think flat screen gaming is is a lot more uh, used to picking up and dropping products quite quickly. Like you might purchase okay. a game, and unless it's kind of a live service or mm -hmm. or, or a, a, I feel dirty saying it, something like Fortnite that oh. people i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> but something that people will continue to come back to yeah i think i think the the mindset for flat gaming or traditional gaming is mm -hmm. is you move on to the next thing quite quickly but i found yeah. in the vr community people tend to stick around for a lot longer 
and yeah. re-engage with the product over and over again. And I think VR developers have cottoned on to that fact and they can, they support their games better than a lot of flat screen games I've ever played. Yeah. Constant updates, you know, challenges, tournaments. Some of these games I'm seeing getting updates are two, three years old. Yeah. And they're still, they're still being updated with meaningful content. It's yeah. just, yeah. It's, it's, it's a great I think, great I think developers are, are figuring out more and more how to make VR work. It's still mm-hmm. so new. And there's so many new tricks and tips that people are discovering with, with regards to like the gameplay loop and making these mechanics uh, yep. a bit more addictive. Because let's face it, gaming is addictive. That's what, yes. you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so when, when, they, when they find a new mechanic that's going to fit well with their game, they kind of retrofit it and they, they polish it and they just, you know... And as you say, they're, they're just constantly updating these games. And it's, it's a great thing. And I think the nature of VR, because it's so much more immersive, you connect more with the game anyway, than yeah, if it's yeah. just on your Switch or whatever. You know, you just switch, just put it down, go and get a snack or something, you know, whatever. With VR, you're in it. And, you know, that that kind of, that need to stay in the game is, is there more than if you were just staring at a yeah. screen. You know, it takes a lot more for you to take the VR headset off rather than just putting the console to the side, isn't it? I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way. You said it beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Totally Appreciate it. that. <laughs> you got it, though. That's all that matters. So there you have it. That's um, Powered of VR by Rainstar. Highly recommend it. Um, yeah. Even if you haven't ever done a winter sport or some shape or form, um, it's still an enthralling kind of ride. So pick it up. So uh, next week, we have a, another new release. It's one that I've been looking forward to. Um, this is called Awake In by VR Bros. So yeah, I can see you're excited for it, Benjo. So you obviously are aware of the title. Um, looks very, very creepy. Um, it's got some very unique mechanics. So I think you play the entire game as like a, a kind of mannequin character in a wheelchair. Um, so that's the kind of form of locomotion that's in the game. And you don't know why, but you're kind of stuck in uh, like a mansion uh, slash hotel. I don't know which it is. Um, and <laughs> and you don't know why you're there. You don't know what you're doing, but it's basically like an adventure puzzler. But it's a horror game. Really, really creepy. So, My favorite. Yep, yeah. yeah, you're totally up your street, 100%. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I was lucky to get a, a preview key for the game. Um, and I've jumped into it for a couple of hours and had a little look around. And um, it really does feel like a well-polished horror title. Um, it definitely kind of put the creeps up me uh, in not so many words. <laughs> is that even a sentence? I don't know, but there it's, it I is. Know, but it is I mean, it came out of my mouth and it's there, so let's just keep that. Um, yeah, why not? Um, so yeah, it really, really creepy. <laughs> it put the creeps up me. <laughs> put, put the creeps up me. What does that even mean? What does that mean? That'll be on that there uh, on the Steam page. It'll be in the quotes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh it man, put the creeps up me. VR ten out of ten. It put the creeps up me. <laughs> VR bug was right. It did put the creeps up me <laughs> several times. <laughs> Didn't even buy me flowers first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Didn't even buy me a goddamn drink. Um. Uh. Yeah. When did that descend into mayhem? Uh, oh, roughly. I don't know. It was good. Yeah, it was good mayhem. It was good. Yeah, it was going, good. That was good mayhem. Just keep going. <laughs> okay. All right. That's cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, my initial impressions of the game um, are it, it seems very good. Does need a little bit of work though. Um, mm-hmm. And I know Greg, you got a preview key for it as well. Um, you got mm-hmm. a few sort of comments about the mechanics as well and how how it kind of functions. So, yeah. what what were your what were your thoughts? Well, I'm going to say, uh, first of all, visually, when I jumped in, uh, it's very polished that way. The, the, it's really well optimized. I had my graphics setting on uh, uh, Ultra, and it, it looks really good. Uh, lo- lots of neat little things in the game. Uh, I love the inventory system uh, because it's basically just a cigar box that sits on your lap the whole time. Uh, and it's very intuitive because you just open the cigar box and you put your stuff in there and you close it and and you open it. It's all still there. You just pick it up, pull it out. It's not like this menu user interface thing that you've got to pull up and point and click and all this kind of stuff. So, but that's a good thing, right? Cause in VR, yeah, I, you don't, I, you don't want that. kind of stuff. Exactly. No. So I, that kind of a, I love inventory systems like that because they, they're not immersive break, immersion breaking at all. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as everything's working right, you know, and, and there's one of the problems that the things that I think they need to work on is like hitboxes in this game, because 
you know, there are times when like there's a flashlight and I'm trying to turn it on and off and my, you know, there's a little switch, a little toggle switch, and it's just not, it's not happening. And I'm like, well, is, is there something wrong? Maybe I'm not doing it right. Mm -hmm. Or like trying to get out of the tutorial, you have to put a key in this door. And the first time I did it, the key didn't work. The second time the key went in, but I couldn't turn it. And I'm like, well, I put the key in. Why isn't the door opening? <laughs> and the third time, and then you can't just like, you can't just like back out. You have to do the tutorial all over again every time. So I did the uh -huh. tutorial like five times just to get that first door open. And the key actually does turn. Uh, I think my comment was, I think maybe it's better sometimes for VR games to simulate the action to make it really simple than try to make it so specific, you mm -hmm. know? So, you know, it just, okay, I put my hand on the, now the key should just automatically do what it needs to do instead mm -hmm. of me having to physically actually, you know, physically you know what I mean? yeah. yeah, yeah, but, I, but, uh, and, and like I said, it, it, it looks really good. Oh my God. The, I don't know if you ran into any of the dolls in that game, then your time period. No, I, I, I didn't. Did. I took my time Scared getting out of that first out room. Of really? Yeah, no, yeah they, they, it terrified me because it's it's pretty clunky getting around in that game. Uh, mm -hmm. So that adds to the terror of how the hell am I going to get away from this? Cause I couldn't, I have a cast iron stomach when it comes to VR, I can do, you know, I can zip around doom speed up and down, jumping, never have, you don't get motion sick. sick. No, this game made me sick when I tried to do the smooth locomotion. There's cause you've got the, the wheelchair part where you can mm -hmm. turn with manually. I thought, Oh, that'll be great. Cause it'll be kind of like uh, covert ops where, you know, and that I never got any feeling of sickness in that game, just swimming around. Yeah. So but for for I'm, those who don't know, covert ops, you're actually sat in a canoe, aren't you? Sitting in a so kayak. It's, yeah. So, so it's similar to a similar to this. type of yeah. thing. So I thought this was a brilliant way to help people with you know, but I I even turned the sensitivity all the way down, mm -hmm. and that helped with the manual for me mostly. But I, even after a while, it would just get me, and I was like, oh, oh, I gotta stop. Yeah. So. So, okay, and, so it does kind of come with a caveat. This is a preview key that we tried. Yeah, this is and a beta. They're this still beta. working on it. So, um, and it, yes, it has some issues right now, but they are working on them. So hopefully by the time release comes around uh, next week, they would find out the majority of these issues. Um, mm -hmm. But it don't let it scare you away from the game. Um, no. It's worth playing from what I've played so far. If you love horror games, if you love a creepy atmosphere, especially if you love puzzle games, then I think this is like got to be one that you pick up. Um, yeah, it's got, good, it's got good yeah. puzzles in it. Mm. Good, it. It's just just a couple little things that just need to be tweaked a bit. And you know, they I did this earlier in the week, so they still have a whole week before you know that to to hammer out some of these kinks. And I'm sure yeah. they will. I'm sure they're working mm. out hard because it's obvious they put a lot of time and love into the game. Because like mm. I said, it looks good. Yeah, the sound environments look great. amazing, don't they? Sa really yeah, good. sound design is really good. Yeah, there's like these little films that you watch you, that on these, and it, some of them are just, they're hilarious because they're I don't know if they're actually real old clickies. Yeah, uh, cause they're like <laughs> si they're like silent films. Yeah, they're, they're they're really cool to watch. You know and uh, like I said, those those doll things, Jesus mm. God. So the, the films I, I are like the they're like the hint system, I think, in the game, aren't they? They give you yeah. A few some clues. of sometimes I watched a couple they are. Of them. Yeah, yeah, and I, sometimes they are. Some and maybe sometimes they are not. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. The last time I was in some closet and I was trying to find more films, the next thing I know, I'm getting yeah. crap kicked out of me. Yeah. And I died. From <laughs> <the fire. laughs> I just I just turn around and I pull up my little grabber hands. I'm like. Aah! <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's something we haven't mentioned actually, because you're in a wheelchair, um, you can't just reach over and grab everything. That some things are kind of out of your reach, and the chair prevents you from picking things up. So they provide you with a unique way of kind of dealing with that issue, and that's like this weird grabber. Yeah, it's, it's like, like it's like it's like the old. Do you remember the old litter pickers? You just used uh -huh, to pick up. Uh -huh. It's that kind of thing, isn't it? But it's kind of like a more science fiction looking. A litter picker it's a bit weird but it does work you know you can yeah. you can reach over you can you can grab the pieces that you need for different puzzles and you know it, you can manipulate it really really well yes again maybe a couple of issues with the hit boxes and stuff but mm -hmm. but overall it's quite a unique little design and i started really getting into it and using it quite a lot and quite enjoying my time with that i think i think that's what's exciting me the most vr bros were courteous enough to, to send me a key and i haven't had a chance to play it yet but it's great to hear your kind of initial thoughts yeah. um my plan was to play it this weekend and then life happened um 
but it will be something I play early next week before release and, and, and kind of share my first impressions. But I think I think they're a smaller developer, and correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I think this is their first game, I th- and I th- think so. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, it's gonna be first or early one of one of the first few that's kind of gone to mass mass release. Certainly, I did check them on Steam. I do. I always do that. Like VR Bros. What else have you made? Yeah. Um, but and I think they've been brave enough to try something brand new. I guess with it in terms yeah. of locomotion, I've never seen a game where you are. I've played a few VR experiences where you are in a wheelchair, but it wasn't one where I could move around. There was a okay. game called The Hospital VR, and it was a static experience. It was kind of a spooky like a ten minute thing. Is so- yeah, it was more of a film. Yeah. Okay. But to actually have the locomotion tied to the wheelchair is, is unique as all hell. And I think they won't know how to tweak that until it, it is pushed out further than just the internal development team. Because mm. what might feel good to them as soon as you put that on, uh, you know, people like yourself start playing and going, yeah. uh, this, is, this needs this much work. I, it's, it's difficult to say, but I think, I hope that that feedback they get from the community will change the way that works because it's interesting to hear that, um, that, that you feel sick playing it, Greg. Because I mean, yeah. I... I, I <laughs> I like you. I was like, I, what? I, I'll often put up my my Will It VR videos, and and they're you know flat screen games being played in VR, but they're running at, a, at quite a speed. And people always comment like, "Why do you not do you not feel motion sick?" And it's just not something that affects me. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting to hear that you're similar, and that one throws you off. So now I'm excited to play that to see if it does the same to me. Yeah, I I, I, admit, I had I had had a couple of twinges. It wasn't it wasn't enough to put me off continuing to play the game or anything, but I definitely had a couple of little twinges. But but yeah, it's it's there. It's definitely there. And I think it's if you don't weird. have solid VR legs, I can't, VR legs, I can't then you might pinpoint struggle. why it is. I, I don't understand it. You know, because mm. it's like, all right, because the first time I started, I was like, oh yeah, I was like, Oof, boy, this this is getting to me. So I went and I cha- turned it down a little bit on the sensitivity. Like it's better, but yeah, I'm still feeling it. And then I turned it all the way down. Yeah. And then then I was like, okay, this is better. This is better. But then after playing it for a while, you know, a few minutes in, I was like, nope, it's starting to get me again. So they, oh, I, they I, give you a teleport. I wonder if it's because it's because you are actually sitting in a chair. So I mean, I mean is yeah. is it a brain is it a brain thing? Like because I don't know because yeah, that must that must feel problem. quite. I didn't have that problem with covert ops, and I was sitting for that one. Yeah, because it must be a strange feeling actually sitting in a chair, and. Because, you know, the first time you play VR, especially mm. when you play a game of locomotion and you're standing and then you start walking for the first time, it's your brain's like, what? Because you're not actually moving, but yeah. you get that you get that feeling of like yeah, 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 going yeah. forward, but not going forward. I've never I've never experienced that in a chair. Um, mm. I don't know. I, I, I'm going to have to play it myself. I am excited. I think the game shows a huge amount of promise, but it'll be really, really interesting to see whether or not you do get any of the yeah. same sort of feelings. Yeah, actually. I, I'm excited to hear. Yeah. Because well, yeah. the teleport works. I mean, it's. You, you click the same button that gives you the grabber hand and then mm-hmm. it'll give you this little teleport thing and you just point and pull the trigger or whatever and then you'll and you see can... a little arrow on the floor and you you kind of i would almost prefer like just the touch pads to rotate the arrow because you're supposed to turn your wrist mm-hmm. and it's kind of awkward oh uh, i yeah i yeah. i remember games I would in ra- passing, yeah i would so. rather i would rather just the touch pad because you could just kind of twirl it around yeah um so, and I mentioned that to him. I, I just gave him my feedback. You know, I was like, this would probably actually be a little better because it's not so awkward. Because that's one thing personally for me that I think might hurt them uh, is it kind of feels like a chore a lot of times. You get to the point, where it's like, okay, it's so hard to get around in this game. It's so hard to get, like, there's a door right there or a drawer. I just want to open it, but I've got to do all of this crap with my wheelchair, which is making me sick. Or I do, you can't think do you think that's intentional? Forward. Yeah, I, I was going to say, be. but but people that are wheelchair bound, exactly, and I thought have that many times have I issues saying, doing the simplest I things. I would have thought, because yeah, I'm not in a wheelchair. I mean, but but <laughs> if you if you've got a chest of drawers, um, like in the, in the corner of the room or something, then uh-huh. there is a door there. IRL, if you're in a wheelchair and you have to get to that drawer, you probably would struggle. So yeah. in a way, it's kind of realistic with what they're doing, and and as that's you say, true, it kind of adds. That trans- does that translate well to playing a game? That's like, the that's the really interesting part point because I think yeah I, I can't speak for wheelchair users but yeah. I think I, I would probably go out and say all very most wheelchair users would choose not to be in a wheelchair if that was their choice yeah you know if if they didn't if they if they had the choice to say all of a sudden I don't have to use this anymore yeah I'm pretty sure they would all say yeah I don't I, don't, I won't I'll, I'll I'll be able to walk but yeah. Yeah, when you translate that into a game and you have all the minutiae and difficulties that come with being wheelchair bound, 
yeah, sure, it's going to be a really authentic experience, but is it going to be a fun experience? It's a hassle. Yeah. That's my problem. Yeah. You know, it's like, God damn, I just want to get over there and I got to do this and that. You know, so that's yeah. it's, it's really interesting. But then, but then you yeah. mentioned you mentioned that it adds to the tension, though, like trying mm. to get away from the, the dolls and, and then things you're like that. Like, so, like, what do I do? Yeah, so so the levels of fear you have probably out outweigh that. Oh, it's very um, interesting. It's like they're, they're achieving what they're setting out to do because yeah, they want to feel scare like scare you shitless and like you know, <laughs> and yeah. and if if there's a chance you can't get away from these things uh, and you've got to learn how to get away from them quickly, then it adds to the tension of the game and and you know. It's, it's Again, another link, layer, link, isn't it? It's, linking yeah. back to powder in the strangest way possible, I'm excited to see this because again, it's someone doing something different with VR. Yeah. And it, we're, we're, the, the more popular VR gets, we're starting to open the doors for people to just try new creative things. And yeah. I welcome it every single time. And it, it might not work every time. Yeah. But and kudos to the developers for, for taking a risk yeah. and going yeah. down the street. And I, I would say the risk is paying off. It just needs tweaking. That's all. Yeah. And yeah. That's, 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 yeah. That's, that's all what I it, it's what it will get. Yeah. Exactly. This is, this is the, the, the caveat, caveat, caveat. It's a beta, you know. Yeah. So I don't know what the finished product is going to look like. I know yeah. what the beta looks like, and these are tiny little things I'm seeing now. And you know, I think the same thing was mentioned even because I read the upload article. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was the same thing. It was like some of this stuff feels kind of like a chore. Yeah. Um, and and uh, but once again, they also said the game is full of promise it's not yeah, terrible it is it's yeah. definitely full of promise so, and you know yeah. coming coming from a place where i've been getting into vr puzzles a lot recently ever since i played like the cyan world games like uh mist and abduction i just love vr puzzles now mm -hmm. and um which is weird because flat gaming wise i was never into puzzles but in, in <laughs> vr i love them absolutely love them and so this is another one that's kind of scratching that itch and i can't wait to see what other kind of puzzles there are in this that I have Do you to know solve. what would work quite well in vr mm. i think i feel like it would work quite well. did you ever play the witness oh yes 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 i did my other half I would, absolutely I would. love that that would translate perfectly into vr it's a gorgeous game yeah and it's just exploration yeah and kind of puzzle solving yeah yeah I'd agreed love to see that in vr agreed i'd love to see the witness in vr as well completely it's, it's off fantastic. tangent again but no yeah, right. yeah yeah make more but, vr games developers yeah <laughs> more vr games more puzzlers please please bro. yes 100 percent. so anyway that's awake in i think it's got promise um we definitely feel they've nailed the atmosphere a few of the mm -hmm. mechanics especially around the locomotion just need tweaking but overall from me it's a recommendation even at this stage um greg would you would you recommend it at this stage or would you say at this leave stage, it a bit, for a bit I'd later say in the wait the cycle? they fix it is okay. what I'd, because like i said for me i i'd love to play more but it, mm -hmm. it's it makes me sick if i try the smooth and the yeah. and the, and the, the teleport just feel because you can only go about four feet at a time and the, yeah. the whole time my wrist around thing it's just it just, just a little feels bit too so much. awkward trying to get yeah. around so Okay, I, so I think so Benjo, uh, report back to us then on I will. on yeah. what you think, and I'll I'll look forward to your video when you upload it to your channel. Thank you. <laughs> so we're already in February in 2021. We've had a few releases, but it's still a little bit dry at the moment. But we know mm. there's more on the horizon. 2021 holds hope for loads of new VR games and different types of genres. So. I thought it'd be a good idea just to kind of run through a few of those and what we thought um, is kind of like the games that we're looking forward to the most in in the months to come. So, started off Benjo, because I know you've done a video on this recently, haven't you? I have. My, yeah. my mind is filled with filled. upcoming VR games. Good stuff. One thing I'll say, which is a, something I said in my video as well, there's so many already on the horizon, but we're only in February. So there's going to be even more because there's stuff, there's stuff probably happening that we don't even know about yet. Yeah. We're going to have like E3 where they're going to announce stuff. You know, Gamescom, there'll be stuff announced. So it already looks good, but it's going to get even better. Um, oh, there's so many I'm really excited for. I've already touched upon one, which is skate, uh, VR Skater. Uh, we've already kind of spoken about how it's great to see new things starting to come into VR. It's not just shooters anymore. We're starting to get kind of different extreme sports and, yeah. and how they're going to be controlled in VR is incredibly exciting to me. Uh, we've already touched a little bit on Awake In, which is another huge one for me because I'm a big fan of horror. If you can scare me in VR, then I'll, I'll play your game. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'm so excited for anything horror-based in VR. So I'm excited to try that this week. Yeah. But some stuff we haven't spoken about, 
Oh, my word. I'm really excited for... I'm going to get the title wrong because I always do. Wraith, the Oblivion Afterlife. Afterlife. Yeah, yes. that's it. Well, no, you, I, think, it. I think you nailed it. Did he nail it? Get, I think he did. No, Oblivion and Afterlife. I usually get yeah. the wrong way around. Yeah. Um, I'm incredibly excited for that. I think yeah, that it's, it looks like another run and hide horror game. And they're so popular right now. Kind of no combat, hands off, just kind of survivor as long as you can. It seems yeah. to be a big... A big fan favorite in the in the horror genre has been for a few years, to be is honest. This, really, is this the one I've last, seen with um, uh, mixed reality videos? Have you done loads of mixed reality videos on yes, the trailers? Yeah, their, their advertising has been pretty much pr- all, I think, uh, mixed reality. Yeah, uh, yeah, the first trailer was the dude going through the house and he's kind That's of it. hides That's in the cupboard at the end. Mm. The, the interesting things for me, uh, the interesting about that game for me is you play as a dead person. Yeah, you're a ghost. You're a ghost, and yeah. you're still scared. There's things hunting you. What? And that, that's the bit that's kind of cool <laughs> for me. I'm like, normally you're just some kind of dude or, or a girl and you're, you're yeah. running around and there's ghosts following you, but you're already a ghost and there's still things trying to mess you up. So how terrifying are the things that are trying to kill you if you're already... Uh, they, can't, they can't kill you. You're already dead. What can they do to you? And, I don't know. And this is what Swallow you call soul. entertainment, Ben? Is this, <laughs> this what is you what call entertainment? <laughs> this is what I want from my video games. You want to put yourself terrifying. through this? <laughs> mm, I do. I, I, honestly, I think apparently it is based on it's based on something. It's either a book series or an yeah, existing. It's a Lovecraft. It's a Lovecraft. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. so because that's why the title was so long <laughs> and intricate. <laughs> it, it, it ties in with an existing um, IP or property, but it, it, it looks it looks great. Um, mm-hmm. I'm hoping it's soon. It was scheduled for quarter one, 2021. I think it's quarter two now. They've, they've done a little bit of readjustment. Not that far off though. That's yeah. Like- I think we'll see it by the spring. I think it will be probably a maybe a May. Hmm. May's looking busy for games in general, but maybe a, maybe a May May okay. release. Okay, um, so you can't really label it survival horror if you're already dead, though, can you? So what do you? Oh what yeah, do you, no. What do you call that? <laughs> you have to swap out the survival part, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know what what that would be. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. it's, it's a whole new genre they're it inventing is. here. It is. The only, and- the only the only game I can think of, which is which is similar was a really rubbish old xbox 360 game called murdered soul sacrifice and in that you played as a ghost and you went around yeah. getting chased by other more terrifying ghosts and it's, it's a similar concept but obviously vr yeah. um I'm, I'm excited for it one of the biggest reasons i'm excited for it is because of the people who are making it fast travel games um great vr credentials if you look back at the stuff they've done um really solid uh road, oh, budget cuts too um yeah. they did curious tale of the lost pets oh yeah yeah the uh, apex the construct yeah. yeah apex construct uh, is one of theirs as well so they've got like a really rich back catalog of just quality vr titles um and i think this is the first horror they've done uh, budget cuts is kind of scary but it's not horror mm. um so yeah I'm, I'm i'm all in on on wraith i think i think okay. that's got great potential uh yeah, so that's one of them. One of the the, the many that? games I'm excited for. Fantastic. Um, I mean, it does it does sound good. It is something that I would like to try. I think you know, it's just an yeah, interesting I'll concept. Be, day one, day one purchase from day one for me as well. Yeah, yeah. This is it. I'm outnumbered here because you two are pretty much <laughs> horror fans, aren't you? And it's like I dabble with like VR horror on occasion, but I kind of have to mentally build up to it. But you two are just like need to buy this game. Yeah, it's scary. It's horror. It's VR. Second I'm buying it. Buy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You two are like that, but not necessarily yeah. me. So, what about so you, just... Greg? Um, is there anything else you're looking forward to um, coming up in 2021? Two of the biggest ones that I'm really looking forward to uh, is the. I, I bought this game when it released on early access on day <laughs> one to support the studio, uh, is Visage. Uh, I, the, the, it's supposed to be getting, I was upset when I found out that it did not have VR support before it released to full release because they said it was going to have, you know, and I asked them several times on every forum I could, I was like, what about VR? And they never say anything. So the company isn't really good about getting back to their people, but I think it's supposed to be getting its VR support this year. And I'm hoping soon Okay. because I haven't played it. I've stayed away from it because I want to experience it. First and foremost in VR. So do you know it, what what's the game about? Do you know? It's a I, I think it's kind of a PT clone uh, type uh, game yeah. uh, where you're walking around and then you're in this house where lots of murders have happened and I think you're actually going through different time periods the way I understand it where different murders have happened and different ghosts are there. I believe it's uh, 
uh, randomized. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like alien isolation where you never know where that damn alien is going to show up. And I got the first time I, I saw this game, there was a trailer they had of just some gameplay. And I remember you, this guy was walking around and the, the, first of all, the graphics are absolutely stunning. stunning and, they, yeah. and they were walking around in this bedroom and they ended up in a closet and they were trying to open the door and you'd see the latch kind of click and they'd look around the closet a little bit and they still couldn't and then they'd click and then you started hearing this like oh. behind him and he turned around and it was this terrifying girl ghost oh god and, went, and her mouth just started opening up she's like what and I was no like, I was like, no no I was just like, no that is scary as no. fucking er i would piss no. myself and that's no. what i want <laughs> That trailer, that trailer was the the reason I backed that game on Kickstarter. I remember yeah. seeing that trailer and I ran to Kickstarter. It's the first Kickstarter project I ever backed because um, mm-hmm. I think we just probably come off the heartbreak of PT. I think it wasn't too long after the kind of PT. Uh, PT's yeah. not happening anymore. Silent Hills is gone, and then that came, and I think horror fans like us were like, "Shit, yeah, this is it. This is the game that will now take that place." And I, I, oh, VR, they said right there on their Kickstarter. Of course, you could see why this game needs to be in VR. It's uh, the <laughs> reason when I backed it, I didn't have a PC. It was before I got a PC. It's before I'd started doing YouTube videos. And I, I backed it and picked PlayStation as the format that I wanted to get my key on because they said there would be PSVR support. And I was like, well, I don't have a PC, but I do have a PlayStation. I do have a PSVR. So I'll back it on PlayStation because that's where I, where I want to play it because I want to play in VR. And then... I can't remember why they sent out a PC key to me, but P backers got PC keys as well, like an early access PC key. And at that point I had my PC and Visage was actually the very first video I made for my channel. It's the very first thing I played. Uh, and oh, it's still probably the scariest game I've ever played. If yeah, they get that into VR, yeah. my God, there's going to be heart attacks. It is terrifying because the random element, you're never safe and they can appear and grab you with almost no notice. Okay, so we, are we talking like an AI then? A bit like Alien Isolation? Kind of. So that it's... Kind of um, the house is always the same, so that part isn't procedurally generated, but the paths that the the ghosts take is is random, and you have a sanity meter that you need to kind of keep on top of by taking pills. <laughs> if you're not popping enough of these pills and you're not keeping your sanity, more stuff happens. No. So if your sanity meter starts to drop, lights will go on, or lights will come off, and then the doors will lock or open... And as you're trying to deal with all that, the ghosts hunting in and, and closing in on you. So that game is a mad dash to light the next candle that you can find because you want to stay in the light because no. otherwise your sanity drops. Honestly, yeah. some of the biggest yeah. screams I've ever done. I know, I can't wait. That's why like I gotta have this in VR. It will so, be perfect in well, VR. Well like like Phasmophobia is is similar, isn't it? So if you don't stay in the light in Phasmophobia, you start going a bit mental, don't you? Start losing your sanity and stuff. Uh, so Imagine just, Phasmo, but like hyper realistic graphics and yeah. the ghost will come walking straight at you oh god no. uh no. seriously nasty stuff like no i mean you're, I you're talking somebody that saw the i saw the grudge um at cinema and it wasn't even film. it wasn't even the original <laughs> it was the the remake with uh, sarah michelle geller and i don't know what it was uh, i don't know if it was my mindset that day or whatever but I watched that film in the cinema, came out, and then stayed away from horror films for about a year and a half. Amazing. <laughs> Wait, I never found that one scary. I just like the grudge. I know, a lot of people don't. But this is the thing. It's like there's just something about that. Oh, God. I think it's a scene where... It's the noise uh, for me. It's, a lot it's of the, don't noise, like the noise. The noise. And it's the way that the grudge comes towards you and kind of mm. crawls up that person that's on the floor. And then it's, it's sort of all this back on its fingers and ah, none no, of that stuff. None of that stuff. So this this game sounds absolutely terrifying, and I, I don't really want to go near it, but I probably will. <laughs> like an the, idiot. One of the first times you see the it is different time periods. There are different ghosts, but the first one you encounter is the one from the trailers, which is yeah. uh, a, a girl, like a young yeah. girl. I can't remember what her name is, but. Uh, Forgotten. Yeah. Each chapter's cut. Each chapter's got the name of the person. It's like the Dolores chapter, which is an old lady ghost, and, mm-hmm. and then there's a. But this little girl is, uh, oh, she's menacing. The first time you see her, she comes walking out of this dark doorway, and she slowly walks towards you. And it's honestly a moment of like, no, no. please stop walking. <laughs> please, <laughs> if you take one more step, I'll turn my PC off. Like, so imagine that in VR. 
Yeah, I know. That's, oh I, my god! And, it, and it, it, is it definitely it, confirmed, right? It so you back the Kickstarter yeah. campaign. Okay, yeah. so they, what's the latest they, update? Yeah, uh, apparently they've said in their messaging that, that the VR support is coming this year. Mm-hmm. So, it is coming this year, right? So it is confirmed. It's definitely for twenty twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, unless something goes terribly wrong. Um, yeah. I know. I know they're a small studio. Sad they Square, are. I think they're called. Sad Square Studio. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on that one, man. I. I really cannot wait to play that game in VR. That will blow some people's minds. That is nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very excited. Um, well, there is there is actually one horror game that I'm looking forward to as well. Um, that's due out this year, and it's I think it's due out really soon actually. Um, could, I think is it is Q one I think, and that's Cos- yeah. Cosmo Dread. Twenty fifth so, of March. Twenty fifth yeah. of March. So this is the the sequel to Dread Halls. And yeah, formerly known as Cosmophobia, for people that might not know that they just changed the name, I think, last week. So, yeah, the day's changed I didn't know a couple that. of times. Yeah, because yeah. I think people are probably confused. It sounded too much like Phasmophobia, and since so that's such a huge game, I think it's a smart move for them to just. Yeah, 100%, that, yeah, that makes sense to make the name change then. I wasn't too sure why they'd done that, but that, yeah, that makes sense when you think about that. But um, mm. for those that haven't played uh, Dread Halls, I guess I'll give you a little overview. So it's kind of like, is it procedurally generated? It's not, yes. is it? It is. Yes, okay, no, it procedurally is. generated, like kind of dungeon. And um, it, it is literally just hallways everywhere uh, with little side rooms and you kind of, you pick up like a lamp and the idea is, is to um, kind of survive and escape. And there's like different locked doors, so you have to find keys, and you're being hunted. You're being chased by various apparitions and monsters that exist in this maze. And it is scary. And it's, it's really terrifying. it's really terrifying, isn't it, Dreadhalls? I've, um, I've never escaped. I, no. I've, I've killed I don't think so. I've ever escaped I'm as well. Game, yeah, I, I, I get to like uh, whatever level, three or four, and then for some reason I, I kind of give up and I don't go back to it. Um, but this has got me um, intrigued, this game, the sequel, because I quite like uh, science fiction horror. So um, think about something like uh, Aliens, that kind of genre, <laughs> or or um, one, uh, one scary film that I do remember watching absolutely years ago when I was massively into horror films, was um, Event Horizon. Yes. What a uh, film. Yes. So... Ben, you're aware of it. Um, I know, Greg, you absolutely love Ben and Rose, and, and it was one of my favourites when I was massively into horror. It's well. basically Dead Space the movie. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like Dead Space the movie. And and kind of Cosmodread uh, gives me that kind of vibe, like you're you're being chased on mm. um, some sort of spaceship, hunted by something. It looks very dark. Uh, you can definitely feel the tension in the trailers that they've shown. And it, I think they, they're kind of carrying over some of the mechanics from Dread Halls into this and basically putting it in a spaceship setting and that appeals yeah. to me more than dread Halls does you know mm-hmm. that that kind of like updated setting to kind of science fiction world i think it's procedurally it generated again and it procedurally is. generated yeah. so yeah. Yeah. which is great because i mean i'm not a fan of all games that are procedurally generated i sometimes think it's a bit of a a cheap way to make a game sometimes <laughs> but um but in this case it'd be great because you could have a fresh kind of uh playthrough of each level each time you play so you know it yeah keeps, it keeps it different other than horror my favorite genre of games is um is, is roguelikes so okay. the games that you would run over and over again and most of them tend to be procedurally generated because i like i used to have this weird saying again when i worked at a game store i think it came from my old manager he yeah. said he wants to get if a game costs 40 pounds yeah, he wants to get forty hours out of it because he wants one hour per pound he spent on the game. Okay, and I and I always and I kind of I just stuck with me. And I always found that those kind of games, the procedurally generated ones, or the ones that you run over and over again, mm-hmm. I always blow miles past the value proposition. So that I'll spend fifteen pounds on that game, but I'll play it for hundreds of hours. Like mm-hmm. Dread Halls, I can just go back to yeah. over and, because I never know what's going to happen in each run. Yeah, and if they nail that with with I keep going to say Cosmophobia, Cosmo Dread. If Cosmo they nail Dread. that with that, it'll be one of the one of the games that you just keep returning to. I think it's a really smart thing to do, not for all games because mm-hmm. I do like my story driven games. And I like yeah. how they've intricately created an environment that feels, you know, that's, it's been put together in a certain sort of way. That's my sort yeah. of game. The intricate I think, story. Yeah, like something like Half Life Alex could never have been procedurally oh. generated because those yeah. worlds were just perfectly created yeah. and they felt like real places. So we know they were 
detailed and meticulous. Mm. But for something like this, it works really well for horror because when you play a story-driven horror game once, mm. you know the spooks. Yeah, it's not yeah. impactful when you play it exactly. a second time. It's not impactful yeah. when you play it a third. It's, it's done after that first time. But if you get that procedural element, like I, so many times I've played Dread Halls and gone, I know the game now. And then I'll walk around a corner and there's just something there. And I just lose my... I, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> you don't expect it. Or you yeah. walk around a corner and like, everything's safe. You turn back around and, you know, it, it, it can surprise you every time you play it. I think that lends itself really well to horror. Yeah. Because it keeps it fresh. Yeah. constantly return to it um and you can put a friend in it as well and, and you can't help them you know that's yeah. one of my favorite things get a friend over and be like play this game and they're like well what do i do and it's like walk yeah, yeah. walk and enjoy that, that chick in dread halls that tall skinny woman that you can't look at oh, oh god yeah. oh god yeah. terrifies me every time I'm yeah. like, don't look, don't look, don't look. When, when you when you walk into a room and she's kind of like in the corner yeah, and facing the corners. Like, yeah, over there. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. I played the quest version recently because I hadn't tried the quest version, um, and it was her that completely ruined me because uh, there was a, there was a pillar, uh, and I did a loop around this pillar just to check because you got to look, look in all the corners because you're looking yeah. for stuff. Where where yeah. are my eyeballs? I need to find my eyeballs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I did a loop around this thing, and I was like, right, there's nothing there. And then as I went back, she was st standing right there, oh, like god. so close to me. Oh it was no. And I looked at her, lost my shit, ran away. But then I ran into the room with the gargoyle thing. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Yeah. No, the gargoyle thing as well. That oh. thing. I came, I came straight out of that room yeah. into a hall with the bloody giant Cerberus dog. Honestly, yeah. my nerves were rattled because it was just like, I, was like, I can't yeah. get a moment to stop. And, and, and you know, the, the enemies in, in Dread Halls are amazing, aren't they? And yeah. each one is very unique. So you've got the scary woman that can just appear anywhere when you mm. least expect it to give you that jump scare. But then you you were talking about like the, the dog with the three heads as the Cerberus mm. dog. Um, it's so giant. That, it's, it's huge. <laughs> but that, that's the one where you walk into the room and you kind of lock eyes with it and you can see it. But if you turn away and you look back, it moves, doesn't it? Is it that that's, one? That's the gargoyle. Is that the gargoyle that I'm thinking yeah. of? If you, if okay. you look at it, yeah, it yeah. doesn't move. As soon as you look away and look back, it's a little bit closer. Yeah, it's yeah, and it's closer. Weeping, yeah. yeah, it's a weeping angel. <laughs> yeah. Doctor Who. Yeah, which by yeah. the way is my background on this screen. Oh, very um, nice. It's it's from the it's from the uh, the episode where they had the weeping angel tracked in that trailer, and they were yeah. looking at the the video camera. So yeah. So as you go, like after a few minutes of just the weeping angel standing there doing this. Then it'll switch and you look back and she's just looking at you. Oh, like, God. Oh. And then oh, a few God. minutes later, she's like, ah. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, but it's fun to be scared. It gets the adrenaline yeah. glands going, you know, and it keeps the gameplay fresh, doesn't I love, it? I love that all three of us, they're like, all these great games come out in 2021. Horror. Horror, 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 horror. horror, horror. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, but I'm, it's funny because... I, there's so many other games that I'm looking forward to, but there's always a place for horror. You know, always. you always, it doesn't matter how you feel about it. You're always curious about horror VR. And, you know, we've watched loads of horror films in our lives, you know, lots of things on TV, read lots of books. If you're into books and that, there's lots of good horror books out there. But maybe, just maybe, VR is the media. For horror. I think it is at this point. It's I, the I, best. Nothing I don't, can scare you more than VR. Yeah. It's very rare that a flat screen game now will scare me, and which is which yeah. is why I was so impressed with Visage because it managed it um, multiple times as well. Like I, I played the first two chapters, and the the third and the fourth have only recently come out, and I haven't gone back to it. Yeah. But it, it consistently scared me, um, and it consistently put me in situations where I did not want to move forward, and I had to push myself to progress mm -hmm. forward. So that's why that really impressed me. But my, honestly, if they get that in VR, they will. But in yeah. VR, it's just a whole other level. But VR horror can still mess me up. Yeah. Oh. Time and time again. Oh. Okay, what about Exodus Legion? Terrifying. So terrifying. That, that episode, that, the, the chapter, that I think it's the third chapter with the baby. Oh, <laughs> God, yeah. Just yep. going up those, just going up those stairs. I was like, oh, uh, you know, my first, my very first video oh, that I, I, I made of that one. I'm going me. up these stairs. I'm like, I already don't like just walking up these stairs. Yeah. And then Stead. I open, no. then I open that yeah. door, and there's that window with the light coming in. And I see that crib at the end. Oh God, yeah. Oh. 
and I stood there for I don't know how many minutes. I had the little the little misty thing, and I was like, psh, psh, you know, just in case, you know, whatever I could do. And I, I was like, nope, I can't do it. I had to come back the next day. Yeah. And, and start the video from there because I, I just couldn't force myself to walk across that room. I, I thought that game was going to be complete crap. Um, no, no. Sometimes you get, I go into projects with kind of a preconception, but I'm not, and I think that comes from playing a lot of movie tie-ins and TV tie-ins mm-hmm. from, from oh, bygone era that were, were never very good. And recently, there's there's been some pretty good tie-ins for, for projects that have been kind of dormant, and, and Exorcist is one of them. And that game oh, so should, shouldn't be ignored by horror fans. If, you, if you're a horror oh. fan, you've got to be like, "Say yeah. that's that's one of the best ones." Um, oh god, yeah. I think it's is, is it chapter two, uh, chapter two, where you're Walking in like an asylum. Yes, that's the and asylum one. So yeah. the, the effect that they did that really scared me in that was walking down like the corridor and it was like um it was padded like the cell and it was stretching and morphing mm-hmm. as you were walking. Yes. Yeah. And yes. then and then you turned around and looked where you'd just been and everything had changed. And there was like now yeah. a wall and all behind of a you. You're in a tiny little box. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you find yourself in the box and then and then you're in the room with with, with the girl in front of oh, you. Geez. Who uh, you know has got a straight jacket on and stuff, and she oh god, oh my god. Anyway, you know what, what, right. So, what games in twenty twenty one are potentially light hearted could make I've you got, feel good inside? Has anyone I've got, got anything? I've got a couple, I've got a okay. couple of light hearted okay, ones. Go on so, go on then. um, in terms of light hearted ones, I'm I'm really excited to see the full release of Smash Drums. I oh, really Smash enjoy Drums. enjoy Smash Drums. Uh, there's, there's a the demo right now with just the one song. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm a big guitar hero guy from from days gone by i used to love guitar hero and that really it feels like those kind of rhythm games were built for vr it feels yeah, like that's yeah. where they're kind of going. We've, we've, all the silly little plastic instruments have died out you know there's probably a couple in people's cupboards around the world still but it's we, we can do that in vr with virtual instruments and drumming works so well um i can't wait to see what they do with that game as a full release because that one level was just a great taster mm-hmm. um rhythm of the universe ionia yeah yeah stunning looking game um basically avatar or fern gully that's but the one that had a demo VR, didn't it, on steam yeah, i think it's still on there um but it's like a rhythm based puzzler adventure game where you're trying to save the natural habitat of all these kind of giant fantastical animals In- incredible visuals it reminds me a huge amount of a huge amount of avatar to be honest of that kind of fantastical yeah. world and the creatures that inhabit it it's it's yeah one of the nicest it, one of the best things about VR, obviously, is being able to step into a world that you could literally never actually go to in, in real life. Mm. And this feels like one of those really, a bit, a bit like Carnage Chronicles did, where we all said, very Jim Henson-esque. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it feels like stepping into something pretty magical. They've nailed that in this, if you haven't okay. checked that demo out. Is it, is it a rhythm out. game? At there are cool. rhythm elements to the puzzles. So music okay. is kind of woven throughout the adventure. But it's but not, and it's at its core, it's though, it's a not a rhythm game. game. Okay, it's very, right. it's interesting. So a lot of what you need to do is tied to instruments, and that's kind yeah. of how you're bringing the the forest and the and the, and the environment back to life is by getting these instruments and playing these tunes. Um, kind of Zelda-ish in that okay. in that regard, because obviously Zelda's tied with a lot of music and stuff. It's um, yeah, that that one's a very very light-hearted. One I'm looking forward to. Nice. Um, if um, if you like Smash Drums, have you tried uh, Ragnarok at all? I have tried Ragnarok. I, I would have thought that'd be up your street then. Awesome, yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've seen a couple of like um, streams of people playing it, and uh, the soundtrack to that sounds incredible. Oh, it's got an amazing soundtrack. Absolutely amazing. When I saw just a, a trailer for that, I was like, "Oh, it's so nice to see a rhythm game that isn't just a Beat Saber clone." You know, yeah, it, 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 something it different. Looks, I like the race element to it. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, that's, that's really cool. No, the only other thing, not the only other thing, there's a lot of games I'm excited for, but the, this probably won't be a 2021 project. Um, but I'm excited for whatever Dr. Beef does next. Oh, yeah, yeah, big time. I, yeah. I don't, I, you know... Have life too. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, we've been through this. Like, we interviewed Dr. Beef on the last episode. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. say it was impossible. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think Morrowind's probably more possible. Yeah, probably. Well, Morrowind's already um, a playable in VR, though, isn't it? I know, but on the Quest, natively. Ooh, I don't, it's quite a we big need, game, We need it? an RPG. Yeah, we do. We do. Agreed. And I'm still, I'm still waiting for that deep, story-driven RPG 
to materialize it's what and we're that... missing especially on the quest I think yeah. the quest is missing. Air. It's got tons of great shooters, some great platformers, and you know, stuff like Moss is on there. Yeah. Um, we've got great puzzlers now, like Mist is there. Yeah. We've got rhythm games. We don't have that kind of really immersive RPG. But having said that, on the horizon, uh, there is a couple of MMOs. There are. Uh, Ale- uh, look quite promising. Yeah. One's called Alicia. Zenith, I think it's called. Zenith um, and Alicia, I think, are the two. Alicia, that that's the other one, yeah. And Alicia looks especially promising as well. Um, seen a few trailers online for those um, and a couple of developer updates and they look like they're moving forward quite nicely but as with all of these you see the trailers and it's oh it looks so good and then you try the game and it, it doesn't always live up to the mm-hmm. hype I'm really hoping that one of these MMOs that are on the rise and potentially in 2021 really does hit the nail on the head and they get it right I want a Skyrim you know I want a yeah. big fat open world that I can just wander off into and never come back yeah. until my headset dies and have to plug in some bizarre Frankenstein power like bank a, solution. Yeah, like Who a, would like do a, that? That's a bit weird. Yeah, like Steve's God, the, like particle collider he has on the back of his head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I completed Half-Life Alex. Seven hours, one charge with that bad boy. It's so, very, know, very yeah. impressive. 77%, yeah, didn't you, at the end? Well, 77%. It, like, it stopped the battery drain for like three hours. Yeah, no he stopped, I think it was 59% when you turned it on. And yeah. every time you checked it, it was... It Gone was, up 1%. Yeah, it had more charge. <laughs> yeah. Like, I really was not expecting to make it to the end of that game on one charge from that power bank. But it's unbelievable. I'm so tempted just to stay in VR for 24 hours and see how long it lasts. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I might do what it. Would you, what would you play for 24 hours? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Do Skyrim, Dude. probably. Yeah. Fallout. Fallout. Skyrim, Fallout. virtual desktop, Fallout. done. Skyrim. Or Fallout, yeah, one of the big Bethesda games. But you're that's, right, that's, we're, we're missing the open world style games, aren't that's we? What, that's what I'm dying for on like a native VR platform. We're, we're spoiled for choice on, on PC VR. There's there's a ton of fantastic ones, but I think I think that market, and it's, it's still a new market, obviously the Quest, the first Quest that's been out for a, a good while now, but it's, we're still missing that killer app. It's, yeah. I think, yeah, something needs to fill that void. And there's been talk of Morrowind as a, as a beef project. There's been a talk of a few. I know that have it, the game being ported to Android first is like a big factor in allow and helping them to kind of create the VR mods. And yeah. I sat and, and I tried to think like, what the hell has been on Android? And I've gone through this list in my head and I couldn't think of anything. I know Bioshock at one point had an Apple version. It was on iPhone. Did it really? I would go. Like, when are we going to get a Bioshock VR game? Oh, I God, would yeah. kill the Bioshock trilogy in VR. Mm-hmm. I will actually kill somebody. It would... No, no. I, I reckon it will come eventually. Probably oh, when VR is... Probably when VR is um, a bit more mature, more AAA studios are taking notice and then they believe they can get their money back from mm-hmm. development costs. I think at that yeah. point, then... Who is it that uh, made Bioshock? Well, it's, it, it's, it's, it was irrational, but now irrational aren't a thing. Um, because Ken Levine and, and, and that studio was, was kind of shut down after So Infinite. did anyone else pick up the IP? The IP is still owned by 2K, and I there thought that, Ooh. yeah, I thought we were going to get something Ooh. at one point because they did they did Borderlands yes, um, in VR, it. and I was, yeah. like, I was like, okay, so they're, they're experimenting with the VR space, we're getting Borderlands in VR, now give me Bioshock, and it, yeah. just, it just hasn't materialized, but that's one of those games that kind of feels like it, it, it just works so well. Yeah. But, it works great for packs. For the most part, I mean, well, it's, it's got fantastic in Vortex. Yeah, but, yeah. My only but, problem with it in Vortex is that the scale is so off, so you feel really small. You feel everything, tiny. Yeah, and like even the big daddies are tiny. You know, everything <laughs> everything's tiny. Like... <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a little bit. <laughs> oh god! Yeah, I don't think I'll play that Vortex. Shock. We are getting system, system shop. shop. Okay, so this yeah. this leads on to another game. So 2021, it's been confirmed that System Shock 2? Two. Two. System Shock 2? The Enhanced Edition. Enhanced Edition is coming to VR, and I think that's coming to Quest as well, isn't it? Yeah, so but it won't be... When the Enhanced Edition comes out, the VR will not be ready. It's just they're, layer, isn't it? Yeah, they're, they're going full VR support, so, I mean... It's not just going to be gamepad or mouse and keyboard. It's going to be motion no, control. I think, I think they're remaking from the ground up. Yeah. So um, I mean, yeah. I'm super excited for that one. Yeah. That so, so has anyone played System Shock? Can you tell me about the I game? I know nothing it. about it. Uh, screenshots look great. It looks like it's maybe a science fiction shooter. It, it, it's, it means, it's, it's deeper. You said, though, you, yeah, you said earlier, you, you kind of um, feel a bit more of an affinity for the, the sci-fi horror stuff. I think you would feel 
very much at home yeah. with System Shock mm-hmm. or System Shock Two. They they are in essence like the the grandfathers or of of Bioshock. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that transfers over, but they are deeper than just shooters. Um, there's a demo currently, obviously only flat screen, mm-hmm. um, on GOG of the enhanced edition for the first game. Okay. Um, and honestly, if you if you can, depends how you are with older games. If you can play older games still now and appreciate them, oh, despite yeah. yeah, I do all the time. Play, play the originals. Play the yeah. originals. You okay. can pick them up for dirt cheap. They're, they're incredible. Oh, but- I don't want to spoil the game for VR, though. That's right? it. So I'd rather wait for VR to play it for the first but time. You, you're going to have to play the first one because they're oh, not doing that. That's VR. fine. All right, I'll pick up uh, System Shock then. I don't do flat games that often anymore, but I think maybe... One of the best villains in gaming history, I think. Wow, okay. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, that's a good a sell. Good Terrifying. Yeah. Nice. Okay, right, I'm sold then. System Shock... Two is also coming to VR supposedly this year, but I think mm, chances are probably pushed back. I don't know. Yeah. Again, I think they're quite a small studio, and they're doing both of the enhanced versions at the same time. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that one's probably 2022. 2022 yeah. for that one. Okay, I'm going to throw um, a game out there as well that I'm really looking forward to. Vertigo 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that way. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, so I good to, good to see the reaction so there. You're as excited as Hell me. Yeah. So have you all played through uh, Vertigo Remastered? Yeah. 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 It was great. It was a great remaster. It's I fantastic. It, it, it feels like um, it's it's got really similar mechanics to uh, Half-Life Alex, mm-hmm. um, but it's it's made by, is it just one person? One guy, yeah. Just it's one disgusting. Guy. How the hell? So, I just, he's a talented. He's so amazing. talented. Absolutely talented. Yeah. Um, the the game design on that is incredible. It's called Vertigo because, well, my my understanding is why it's called Vertigo is because the environments are so big in places. Yeah, like, they're absolutely totally huge, aren't they? Huge. Some of the rooms you end up in are just mental. Yeah. Um, and the the weapon mechanics feel great. The combat's fantastic. Right? And you've got melee in there as well as as guns and ray guns or whatever else. Again, it's a kind of futuristic science fiction kind of game An extremely weird kind of irreverent humor at points oh, as well yeah f- fantastic funny. humor the music is the music is fantastic mm-hmm. and he writes all of music too yeah and, you know, yeah. yeah and but, you know in the in the post half-life alex world um i think vertigo 2 is looking really really good yes. and um he keeps posting little snippets of stuff he's done yeah it just makes yeah more excited Game. yeah i can't wait and originally that was due to come out end of 2021 uh sorry 2020 but that's been pushed back which i'm fine with <laughs> you know yeah. if, if he felt like he had to rush any part of that game I'd, I'd be very sad i'd rather he just carried on doing what he's doing and what he does best and then when it finally does release uh, hopefully this year then we're going to get such a nice experience and i can't wait to jump into the world of vertigo again and yeah, kind of yeah. see how that story progresses um, and the bosses in that as well was <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> and again, they they showed a lot of like uh, comedy. You know? So what, much. What was the name of the the eye boss? It's like a Fred. Was that Fred? Was, was it, it Frank? Fred or something like that? Or Fred Frank, or Frank, Frank was, maybe. I think, Frank. I think it was Frank. Yeah. Maybe so yeah. at one point you come across this this and jar that's broken, and there's a couple of other jars that have got like these little eyeball oh, creatures yeah. in, and you're like, oh, they're cute. They're just in a jar, but Frank. <laughs> Frank was in one of those jars and he escaped and he leaves like this horrible black like trail into this other room. So you're like, well, let's go and find Frank. He's only, he's only a little thing. Let's go and speak to Frank. Maybe put him back in a jar and walk into the next room. And lo and behold, it's huge. And Frank's at the end and he's grown and he takes up nearly this entire room. He's, oh, it's, great. it's fantastic. And, and I just love the um, the boss maybe? design this in this side. game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only one I don't go. like is that damn big eel thing at the beginning because it's so hard to get. Past. It's hard, isn't it? It's you a hard, hard boss. You're so tired by the time because you're smacking his tentacles. Mm-hmm. And you're <laughs> I I I liked it because it was like a proper sense of achievement. Oh my um, god! It yeah. didn't feel unfair to me. It didn't feel unfair. You really had to be quick with your sword. Oh, and if yeah, you if you were quick and you learnt the patterns. By, by the time you beat him, you feel thoroughly satisfied that yeah. you deserve that win. 
And there's not really many games that do that. For a first boss. For I a first boss, yeah. Hardest, out of all the bosses, that one was the hardest. For all for a first <laughs> boss. Do you, do you know what? We're talking about it, which means that it was a memorable fight and <laughs> oh, yes, something that we liked about the game overall. <laughs> So he did well, yeah. and hopefully there's going to be more of that in Vertigo 2, and maybe the action ramps up even more. Maybe the types of bosses are even bigger, even better. I don't know. I just can't wait to see what, what his mm. creative genius mind comes up with, because he is he's a prodigy, that guy. He's an absolute prodigy. Huge, yeah. huge respect huge, to, to yeah. the one-man team that can yeah, put off something. Big, big quality. respect. So, uh, yeah, Vertigo 2, that's another one looking forward to. Um I'll reel off a few more. We don't necessarily have to go into detail. Up to you guys. If there's anything you want to have a chat about, let me know. Um, Green Hell. Oh, yeah. Green yeah. Hell. So very, if you're fans of The Forest, uh, which got VR support big as fan, well, fan, which is yeah. like a um, kind of survival game, uh, Green Hell is coming out with VR support this year. We also have, um, supposedly, whether or not it gets pushed back, Lone Echo 2. Oh, I'd love to oh, see it this yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. That that's be been awesome. kind of tentatively hanging there for a little while though in terms of when it's going to come out years for a now. long time for an yeah. absolute long time so um it would be great to see lone echo 2 coming out we remember we also had um on the oculus quest it was announced um project four, project project four. stress yeah. level yeah. zero so this is meant to be set in the boneworks universe but kind yeah. of a a quest version of boneworks i guess um that's apparently in development uh, is it was that 2021 do you does I think know? that I think that was announced at the um at the same event that the quest 2 was announced at last year it was one of their kind of yeah key key yeah, announcements yeah. I, I, I would yeah, I, mean, yeah I, I don't know how far into development it is I mean boneworks is a, is a technical marvel like is the it? stuff you can put up in a game is incredible if they're trying to do something like that for quest if it takes longer it takes longer I'm just like yeah. take the time. It's going to be incredible whenever it yeah. drops. I'd are, love to are you see a it this year, fan but... of Boneworks, then? Yeah, huge fan of Boneworks. Huge yeah. fan of Boneworks. Nice. Even the, even I, I... The, even the story. Mm. Well, That's the story. Uh, Don't worry about that. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just the the. Just like... Just play the game. You can some of the stuff you can pull off in that game doesn't feel real to me. I'm just like, how have they done this? Um, I know. But just everything, anything you think of that you can do in that game, you could do. Yeah, I think. Like, Con con <laughs> yeah, con controversially, this might be a controversial opinion, but I think mechanically, not the polish and certainly not the story, but mechanically what you can do in that game is more impressive than what you can do in Half-Life Alex. Absolutely. The physics are better. Because they, yeah. they came out quite close to each other and, and people were like toting Boneworks as like, oh, it, this could already be the Half-Life Alex killer. And I obviously played it before Alex because it was out first. Yeah. And it blew my mind straight out of my head. I was like, this is absolutely insane. I can hold on to this mallet. And I can hang that on that rope, and then I can hang for, and I can slide. Yeah, it yeah. just logically, if something would make sense in the real world, it makes sense in the game. Yeah, Half Life Alex blows it away in terms of the polish because you know polish they've got they've got better. all the money in the world yeah. to throw at it. So the story was impeccable, the polish was impeccable, but physics and as a playground, Boneworks. Yeah, is, so I would just say Boneworks is physics porn. So it's, phys yeah, it's physics porn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so. It, Alex, they did a great job with their physics, and they did what works really well for a game like gotcha. Alex. Yeah. Uh, it, you, I don't think you could do an Alex and still have the enjoyment, the same thing that you did in Boneworks. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, You've so, never had that kind of freedom of movement in any Half-Life game, so why all of a sudden would you get it in Alex just because exactly, it's, exactly. it's VR? Yeah, you know? You're right. It would probably feel out of place, wouldn't it, if they went full yeah. hog with the physics like that? Yeah. No, don't get me right. wrong. Like, I'd love to see them do something like that with that budget and that polish a bit mm. more of an open playground to kind of attack the situations mm. in the ways you see fit would be absolutely incredible mm. and i wouldn't I but, wouldn't but not when you think about it though half-life broke grounds with physics in gaming yeah. anyway so it did you know would it would it be out of place if they did go full physics with it further well, down yeah, the I mean, line i still remember my reaction when i saw the first trailer for half-life alex and i saw them pushing the, the, oh, the, God, the yeah. out on the shelf and i remember watching it with a, with a friend and I was losing my mind but I was trying to keep myself calm because I was like this is going to be a vertical slice this isn't going to be real this is this is going to be a yeah. a trailer created for the purpose of getting people excited but when the yeah. game comes out it won't be this and I was trying to hold it all back because I was like it can't be this it good it can't be this good is that yeah. good and then, then, <laughs> then you play it and you go well it was actually Boneworks that made me think shit Half Life Alex is actually going to be that good because as soon as I played Boneworks and I was pushing stuff and I was like okay 
I can interact with all the objects in the in the way that I should be able to interact with them. Yeah. I was like, holy crap! If if this game's done it and these guys have done it, yeah, Alex is going to be amazing. And and it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, remember, I remember when that trailer came out for Alex, and I saw all kinds of comments like, "There's no way this is real. VR games never look this good." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it came out, and oh god, that first I... that helicopter comes flying over you, and this the city opens up in mm-hmm. front of you, and I was like. <gasps> <laughs> it's like it this is that game. Is insane. We've made it. Yeah, we're here. Mm. So, so physics wise, I completely agree about Boneworks versus Alex, hundred percent. But imagine the computational power that's required for that physics engine. Can they really get that working on the Quest? How's that going to go into the bloody Quest? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. But there have been a few examples of things that are doing some yeah, good stuff. Absolutely, I've seen like a guy that does like a physics garage or something with zombies. Physics in hand it. lab is one, yeah. isn't it? Well, no, this is a no. There's oh. he's got zombies in it, and he, the way he's interacting with them with like it, it looks Boneworks level physics. I think it's physics playground. I think it's called physics on playground. Side yeah. quest. Oh, uh, let's and let's go chopping. Uh, that's that's, that's got some, well. yeah that's got um, decent physics on. That's a quest. And again, that's it? a smaller project, and they and they've managed to kind of get that kind of. I, the way I test it is I usually hold something and just push it against something. Like, can I push through this object? Yeah. And that, that's what broke my heart when I jumped into Medal of Honor. You know, this, oh, God, this yeah. 60 pound product came out, it looks nice. And then I'm putting my hand through stuff and I'm not, yeah. I'm not like, collision detection. And yeah. I'm like, really? Like, we just yeah. come off the back of a great run of stuff that's pushing the medium forward. And then this has come out and it just feels so flat in comparison. $40 um, million. Dollars. Is that how much it was? Forty million. That's how much it cost to produce that game. Oh, holy cow! Holy cow! Although it's had so many updates (laughs) since I tried it, it's had so many updates. I, I, part of me wants to start again with that game just to see whether or not they've they've managed to improve drastically on it. (laughs) No desire. It's such a shame. Oh god, how I was hyped for that game for so long. So long. Oh my god! I I was every single time a new trailer released. I just this is what really watched it back again and again. Upcoming games. This is what worries me about Splinter Cell and uh, Splinter Cell and Creed. The way yes. I talk, yeah. you know, twenty twenty one for those. Do we think? If it does, they're going to be shit. Yeah, they come out. They come out this year. Yeah, come out this year. The cash grabs. Yeah, uh, they're yeah. going to be small experiences. Yeah, yeah. Um, that are going to be. Want tasters okay I don't want so so I that they should be yeah. at least two years out from now at least at least yeah to be decent There's, games agreed i want yeah. a proper experience I want, I want you know i want an assassin's creed game in vr i don't want an altair experience where I, I jump off the top of a thing into a hay bale and i run around for 10 minutes and then that's it because yeah. that's yeah. that's the danger of a big triple a company going all vr is hot right now let's and quickly get something out for it yeah. and make some money yeah. you know, yeah. and Star unfortunately Wars, galaxy Edge, yeah. uh, jurassic yeah. world look at yeah. them they're just yeah that's what I was about, yeah. to, about to say. It's like, unfortunately, Oculus got a history with it already. Um, yeah. They they think, what big IP will draw people into VR? What IP will make people buy that quest? So they're like, Star Wars. Star Wars. Here we go. Let's make an experience. What do we want to do in Star Wars? Hold a blaster. Hold a lightsaber. Um, okay, let's do those two things. Let's throw it into Star Wars universe. There you go. And we'll make that part and one. We'll milk it. it part two, parts. part three. Yeah, we'll keep on milking it. Pay for it twice. Yeah. Or two uh, times. What, what else? <laughs> what else could bring people into the quest? <gasps> dinosaurs. I know. Yeah. Jurassic Park. Nice. What do we want to do? Hide from dinosaurs. What else do you want to do? See a T-Rex. Anything else? Brontosaurus. Have we got those things? Yes. Let's do it. Yes. Jurassic yeah. World. Let's make it, let's make it Aftermath. Nice. Oh, hang really on. Let's milk it. Problem. Part one, part two, <laughs> part three. Right. What's next? Splinter Cell. Yeah. What's Stark next? Spider-Man Assassin's VR. Creed. I, I see you, Oculus. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Not happy. Not happy. You want people to stay in VR, then you give them good experiences. Not these little bites that don't work long term. It's going to ruin my, VR. Yeah, my, my hope is that... Oh, this probably won't be the case. My hope is that Jurassic World and uh, Star Wars were a direct result of the Quest 2's come out. It's selling shit. We need some, we, we need, we need some Christmas releases. We need some big Christmas. And they got them both out before Christmas as halves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my thought process of why they've done that because it's so clear they weren't ready for release. They should have released this year as full packages and they've gone, we, we need a Christmas release. Because yeah. that thing sold like fucking, you know, that went crazy. So, yeah. yeah and a good developer as well is Coat Sync, wasn't it? Um, yeah, Coat Sync. 
great developer. I mean, the, the fundamentals are there. I enjoyed, I enjoyed what I played, but like, it was a static world. I didn't feel like I was part of that world. You can't knock over chairs. I can't interact with objects. Everything's just it may as well be painted on. Mm. You know, the only things in that world that you can interact with are the buttons you need to press to progress the story, and the dinosaur that kills you. It felt, and then the dinosaur was just a freeze frame. It, it just felt, yeah, it felt flat and dead to me. I wasn't scared at all of those dinosaurs because they're cartoons, and you know, <laughs> I. It, it, you could do a cartoon and do it well, but they did nothing with lighting effects or particle effects like fog or anything to bring to really flesh out that world. It's just a flat, boring. And we mentioned yeah. it once before with um, the cartoon graphics can work as a horror. If you think of something like uh, Lies Beneath. Lies Beneath. That was a much better atmosphere. That was scary in places. Yeah. That was really yeah. scary. And that was cartoon graphics. So really was... hyper stylized, but like yeah. crazy yeah. looking stuff, man. Yeah, exactly. And and so I, I thought when I first saw the initial clips for uh, Jurassic World Aftermath that maybe they pulled off the same trick as um, the developer did with Lies Beneath, whereas they, they managed to make dinosaurs scary even with a cartoon aesthetic, but mm -hmm. it didn't work. Didn't work. No. I just we've we've seen it in all you know in all kinds of gaming media. If you try and rush a project to completion or rush a project to release, it doesn't it doesn't ever end up well. You know, take a look at Cyberpunk. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 the history <laughs> history repeats itself over and over again. Uh, you know, a delayed game will eventually be good, but a rushed game is forever bad or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's. <sighs> I hate, I hate to see it, and I don't want to see those kind of bad habits start to bleed into mm -hmm. VR when it's still a quite a, quite a new medium that's still growing, and we're, we're developing habits. Yeah. And it's, it, I don't like to see that. The day when I'll start to get really worried is when all the games start having microtransactions and loot boxes. That's oh, when God, I know. Oh, no, no, no. We no, made it to a point where we need to start going backwards, yeah, but um, yeah. we're not I mean, there yet. No, we're still we're still years away from mainstream VR as it is. It's only yeah. just beginning to pick up now. Um, it's picking up at a fair rate but it's going to get bigger um yeah. another couple of years and we'll see those headsets fly off the shelves especially with um future iterations of the quest and stuff and then hopefully we'll see even better quality games coming as more uh, development I studios take will. bigger risks I think this is like it's only gonna get better it's, it's yeah, only gonna get better just had to happen and if, yeah. it, if it helps kickstart vr get more people into it then pretty soon the competition between these companies is going to start where they're like, okay, we we got to start making good games now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't get away with the cash grabs anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have yeah. to start making the games that people really, really want. They want those AAA experiences. We, those we, big you saw it with with Medal of Honor. You know, the the, the immediate knee jerk reaction from the VR community was very it negative. Was fierce. Yeah. It they was fierce. They were angry. So. It got panned so hard, um, and you know, I felt for them. I mm. felt for them because, you know, people yeah. have, have woken up and worked on that game for years of their life yeah. and, and they put their heart and soul into their work and what they're doing as a development studio. And they obviously believed in, you know, the story. They believed that they could really pull it off. And unfortunately, when it gets panned like that, you've got to feel for these um, studios. You really do. But yeah. they are still working on it, so fingers crossed they can make it into something a bit more close to that other to World War II game coming out here. Blood Force. Yeah, that one looks that one looks really promising. So. Um, sorry to disappoint you, but I think there was a Blunt Force demo, uh, maybe a year a long ago. Long time ago. Though. Yeah, but um, yeah, it wasn't great. That was, that was more than a year ago. I think that was a couple of years ago. Yeah, but what, it really wasn't great. <laughs> Um, oh yeah yeah it looks really good it looks good um i think it was teleportation at the time and it had a little bit of the medal of honor kind of vibe going on about it i yeah. can't i did play it i did play it and i can't remember i'll be honest i can't remember too much about it all i remember was that i came away with quite a negative feeling about the game oh, uh, so i hope that that changes it has been a long time it's been a long time then and um we'll see how it goes but we'll i'm not yeah. holding out hope for blunt force anyways. but it's okay because there's plenty of great stuff coming that we can still there's be excited about. yeah exactly like uh, another one um which i want to throw out there as well for 2021 is mask maker yeah. oh yeah okay so this is by inner space vr and um, they did a fisherman's tale which is an amazing little um comedy cutesy puzzle adventure very funny great uh great script 
all the characters in it were were just fantastic and um it, it made really good use of scale with the puzzles and really good use of vr in general it was just brilliant whimsical whimsical that's that's a good word for it whimsical you know <laughs> and um, it's it was really short it was you're right paper is longer yeah, fingers crossed it is is longer. I think um, that, it, separate conversation maybe, but I think that's the one thing I hope to see VR start to break away from over the coming years is the is the is the two to three hour curse. Yeah. It seems to be that the most VR games fall almost bang on within that mm-hmm. playtime, and they're struggling to like break free from that and get any longer. They start I off don't... as tech demos. Yeah, they start off as tech demos, and then they get a certain amount of interest, and they go, oh actually maybe we could make this into oh. a full-blown game but i don't know how much of a risk i want to take so they take it a step further from a step uh, tech demo and then they push it another couple of hours and then they'll see if that sells um but yeah. I, I think that that's that is a trend that's disappearing now the, the correlation is is right like the price to length still feels okay within vr i mean like full price triple a games that are eight hours flat screen are yeah. sitting there at like 50 60 quid so VR games as an entry point of being kind of 15 to 20 pounds if they're shorter is fine. But I would like to start to see them kind of grow beyond that because games like Half-Life Alex again and, and Boneworks have proven that there's there's a hunger for that and people will sit and play. For God's sake, you played Hellblade in one sitting. Like there's, there's, a, there's yeah. a hunger for people that play VR. Yeah. We want long experiences. We do. We I might not be Hell- like you and play them in one sitting, but, but we want long experiences. <laughs> I beat Half Life Alex ten times now. Ten so, times. I, I mean, think I think yeah. I'm probably up there for. It's my favorite favorite VR game. Closing in on my favorite game right now. Actually, I would yeah. say the more time I'm spending in that universe of Alex, the more I'm loving it. And even beautiful. with the mods, and there's a couple yeah. of mods on the horizon that are going to be released soon. That mm-hmm. look, look incredible. Amazing. Yeah. Levitation yeah. looks amazing. That's, Have you seen Levitation? Yeah, I'm thinking about Levitation. Yeah. Looks like a full campaign. Yeah. So I know someone that's done a bit of playtesting with it, so it's and preci, says it's in, it? it's preci, yeah. And he said yeah. it's it's incredible. Can't wait. Says, and then we'll get half life Gordon at some point in the future. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, I could talk about Alex all day. I really can. <laughs> anyway, Mask Maker. Right. So Mask Maker, same guys who did Fisherman's Tale. Um, I will read out what it says here in the synopsis. Set in a realm ruled by the titular character. You're his apprentice, learning his secret, magical ways of making masks. There are no ordinary masks allowing you to freely explore eight level biomes and discover their secrets. So it looks like as an apprentice, you have to build these kind of masks. And every time you wear a mask, it takes you to a different location in the game that's obviously filled with different types of puzzles. So I had to read that because I totally forgot what it was about. Um, (laughs) but, But basically, it's really interesting and it sounds like quite a break from what they did with the fisherman's tale but still puzzle based and um i've got great confidence in this studio after a fisherman's yeah, tale and you know this kind of almost majora mask kind of uh, yeah. experience appeals to me yeah. so i i'm this is definitely one i'm looking forward to in is it this studio aren't they associated with vertigo games possibly i, I don't know they which were... brings up another game that i'm really excited for okay and ever since i saw it was after the fall which is supposed to be coming out yeah, uh, I mean, they're the same people that did Arizona Sunshine. Mm-hmm. And still, still a classic. Still a great multiplayer co-op experience to go with a friend and go shoot zombies. But this has like crafting and melee and all this kind of stuff in it. It takes place in a like a looks like a kind of a tundrish like ice age type world. And the, so the zombies are more like frost people. And it looks yeah. like there's some really great big bosses in it. And I think you can play with up to four people. In the oh, campaign. wow. Nice. Yeah, they've kind of toted uh, it as almost like a Left 4 Dead for VR. Yeah. So okay. I'm like, I see this and I know their track record and the stuff they put out. And I've been excited for this game ever since they announced it because I just know what they can do. And, oh, uh, fantastic. Uh, it, it doesn't look like it's going to be like graphically a level game like Half-Life Alex. It looks like it's probably going to be just an upgraded version of maybe at least from what I've seen of uh, Arizona sunshine, which I still think is a fine looking game. Mm -hmm. Um, So especially like what they did with Arizona sunshine and the quest two still blows me away. How good it looks compared to the quest one version, which I couldn't even play because it was so ugly. So, you know, (laughs) (laughs) it's like, Oh God, this is terrible. (laughs) Well, I'll get it around one on the quest two though. 
But yeah, yeah. I, I, I liked um, Arizona Sunshine. I, I, I'm not his biggest fan. I know there's people out there that absolutely love it and consider it like their favorite VR game. I oh, think no, I think it's a good favorite, game. A I think game. it's a good game. It's a fun game co-op. I mm-hmm. think that's the most fun I had with it. It wasn't single player. It was when I played with a friend, hundred uh, percent. I think it's being held up by a lot of nostalgia. I think for a lot of people, it was one of the first VR games they played that had kind of a substantial story. Okay. So yeah. it, for, for yeah. me, it will always be high on any ranking because there's that, that nostalgia factor of like that was one of the first. They really got that right. Mm-hmm. That's one of the well, first. They had so many great moments, like. When you're down by that mine oh, and you don't start the mine. that thing and that bus comes falling down yeah. and the zombies yeah. just fall and you're just like, <gasps> it's like, yeah. oh. And you see them running towards you and they're like falling yeah. over the edges and over each other to get uh-huh. to you. And it, and now you're like, you're looking at your guns going, how much ammo have I got? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how am I going to get through this? It's like, how many grenades have I got? Oh, uh-huh. panic. Yeah, no. yeah that, that yeah, is that's... good. Um, it's it, it's a classic, and the the DLCs are great for that game. I still love playing the Damned with a friend. You know, just running. That's such a great DLC. Um, yeah, good stuff. So, well, um, okay. So after the four, is it a similar thing to Arizona Sunshine? You mentioned there I were think, zombies and that, so it's like a yeah. But I don't think they're zombies. I think they're more like like I said, they're maybe people ice. that have been irradiated in a in a, yeah. a nuclear winter or something. I don't know yeah. exactly how it all works frozen out. mutant type things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, if they stick with similar mechanics to Arizona Sunshine, then they're going to be onto a winner anyway, aren't they? Like, yeah, they can't. Well, they can't. With this one, there's crafting and stuff too. So yeah, you know, a bit more depth. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And I think. I think perhaps that's the thing with Arizona Sunshine. I wasn't too, you know, happy with was there wasn't much depth to it. No, it was you just. Know, a it, was made, it, was it was just an arcade a arcadey game, arcadey wave shooter type thing. Yeah. Really, wasn't it? Just set over beautiful environments. But so you know, you this had might that, more. I, the, when it first came in with Arizona Sunshine, you just had that feeling of like the Walking Dead with like getting into the cars and looting and all that. Yeah. You know, oh just, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it it was a first one of the first like big adventure games yeah. I went on as far as it it you didn't beat it in two hours. You know, it mm. just kept going and going and and so. Uh, I don't know. My son didn't like it because the the character talked, and he's like, "I don't want the, my character to talk. I want all the talking to be me." To be, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know though. It added layer of comedy because he, ta- he talks about he Fred, doesn't he? Fred, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's always Fred, Fred, isn't it? It's always Fred. It's always Fred. <laughs> it's always Fred. Yeah, he talks about Fred. He's like, "Hey, Fred, how you doing?" How's uh-huh. things today? Oh no, where's your body gone, Fred? And all that, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. It's like, it was, it was very good. So. Hopefully there'll be an edge of comedy into After the Fall as well. Oh, I, you know? I wouldn't be surprised with this yeah. bunch. Yeah. That'd be good. Right then. So I, I think we pretty much covered all that I've kind of made a note of to talk about. So I don't know if there's any other games you can think of off the top of your head. Um, no, no. I'm going to have like four hours to edit here. So <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's true. Yeah, you're gonna be oh, hang on. There is, uh, there is one more, actually. So there is one more game that I'm looking forward to. Um it got announced towards the end of last year, but I don't know whether or not it's coming 2021s, and it's called Demio, which is like oh, like an RPG, almost like a, a kind of board game style. It's like a tabletop. VR. Tabletop oh, okay. RPG. Yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about now. It okay. looks like it's turn-based. Yeah, I think so. Um, and it looked Wait, very, very yeah. refreshing from what I saw in the trailer. Again, when I was re- researching my list of the upcoming games, I... I encountered that a ton of times and people were speaking really highly of it. I didn't include it because I didn't didn't know enough about it myself and didn't feel confident to say this looks great because I hadn't done the research. But yeah, people are people are excited for it. Um Yeah, and I don't think, think there's a lot of for that turn based RPG type game in yeah. VR. I've always thought that would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean so. there isn't a lot of uh, kind of tabletop style games in VR uh, yet. I think Catan got converted. Catan VR, um, Catan VR is a thing. I know Zero. Got... Okay. Yeah, Spiro is another one. But it's, it's, not, it's very simplistic mm-hmm. tabletop game where you place, uh, you have to basically build tracks, and it's the last person to stay on the board. It's hard to explain, easy to play. Um, but that, <laughs> that had a VR conversion, and obviously you've got tabletop simulator where you yeah. can basically any tabletop VR game, game, any tabletop game that you want. Is that any um, good? I've never actually played it. It's great. It, you yeah. know, it's just you can all just sit around a virtual board and play cards, or you can play dominoes, or any oh, nice. kind of proper okay. board game you can think of has probably been modded into that game so probably um, good during the pandemic then just to kind of chill with kidding. a few mates and that play a couple yeah. board games a ton, a ton of us used to we were, during during the start of the pandemic god it's always been a year uh, last year yeah. um 
used that game to just connect and play board games we used to get together and play. So we play a lot of uh, the Binding of Isaac card game. Uh, oh, okay. So it's um, quite an intricate game, and it normally takes us a couple of hours to play that when we get together. But we played a, quite a bit of that in, in tabletop. And if you play it in VR, you can literally sit there and you can you can play with, play the cards. And, and it's, oh, no way. It's, it's genuinely... Um, you can draw all over the table. Um, <laughs> you can flip the table if you want. Um, <laughs> it's It's... Yeah, it's. I think that's a really underrated. Uh, it's very different from Demo, Demo or Demo. Demo, Demo. I feel like I have to look it up. That's I think like it, I think it's Demo. Yeah. Thing. Um, but yeah, I think there's there's definitely a market for tabletop games in VR and kind of turn based games and anything. Yeah, and this know? this game, yeah. um, I think it has so tabletop elements. But it sounds like it's like a proper RPG, RPG. like fantasy adventure mm -hmm. as well. And I don't know if it goes from the tabletop situation into more kind of first person um, view. There's not much information about it at the moment. It's basically no, I couldn't find much. Yeah, so I think I think it's just one to have on your radar, really, and just keep an eye on because it looks it did look really really interesting. Mm. So there, so there you have it, folks. That's our up and coming games for 2021 that we're all really excited about. I can't wait to sort of see what the next year brings for VR. I'm sure it's going to be great. Probably a few not so great ones in there. But, you know, <laughs> hey, that's Terrible. the way the VR industry is at the moment. <laughs> but I think there's going to be a good few ones that we're going to have a great time with. So look out for those. So there you have it, folks. That's episode seven of the Trip VR podcast. Just want to say thank you very much for joining us. So I've been a VR bug. And I've been Dr. Greg. Oh, hello. I'm Beardo Benjo. Beardo Benjo. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you to Benjo for joining us for this episode. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thoroughly enjoyed the discussions. So thank you so much for being here. Honestly, thank you for having me. It's been wonderful to sit here and chat about VR for many, many hours. I could continue to do this long into the night if I didn't have work oh, in yeah. the morning. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel you, man. I feel that as well. So thanks once again. If you want to check out any of Benjo's stuff, please do. You can find links to his channel in the description down below. Highly recommend checking out the channel. It's got full of great VR content and one of my favorites. So and don't forget to hit like. Yes. And subscribe yes. And click the bell and comment and all of that jazz all that good stuff all that good yes. stuff thank you greg i always forget that at the end don't I? so thank you very much for doing That's that why i always have to remind people what's wrong with you exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly we'll see you in a couple of weeks on the next one thanks for watching bye bye bye, bye.